All right, we're calling this meeting to order at 6.02 p.m., a regular meeting of the Isla Vista Community Services District Board of Directors, uh, Tuesday, June 20th. Uh, and I'll announce that this meeting is being recorded. Secretary Brandt, if you can take roll. Director Bertrand. Present. Director Jordan. Present. Director Brandt. I say here. Director Freeman. Here. Director Hedges. Here. Director Geis. Here. Director Thurlow. Here. Okay, all directors are present. We have a roll, uh, we have a quorum. And uh, now we'll go into hear reports from committees. Uh, has the formation committee met since the last meeting of the board? I don't think so. No, no. No. We canceled our last meeting, so our next scheduled meeting is Monday. That would be next Monday, correct? The 26th. Yeah. And it's scheduled for 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Cool. Great. Um, as far as policy committee, uh, we did a review of, uh, in, well, more of an inventory for the preliminary policy manual and went over um, different aspects of uh, what still needs to be included in it and how we want to order it. Uh, we also went through conflict of interest policy again, and uh, Director Freeman had some advice from his personal counsel that we uh, we thought about, but uh, we came up with some things to send to legal counsel for um, for direction on. And anything to add to that, Director Freeman? Uh, no, in fact, I was actually going to then, because I'm not certain it's entirely what from that conversation I should or should not say, so. You, you're yeah, free to you share think. any of it that you, you can pass on anyway. Okay, that was because then, like, immediately after, thereafter, there was an email from you about like things that we should not be sharing from. <laughs> 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 okay, fair. So, uh, so uh, I forwarded then the information as directed to um, uh, Trindle, uh, and uh, I was told back that um, one thing that we should consider doing is sending to him um, the, uh, the task of putting together an entire draft policy manual, which he would then come back with uh, for us to essentially improve on mass. Yes. That's accurate. Ba basically what it does is it avoids having the board approach this from a piecemeal standpoint and having disjointed parts kind of strung together. If we look at it holistically from the very beginning, we can incorporate any, uh, any issues or concerns and address those at the outset rather than having to go back after the fact and then you know, address them as, as they're passed. And I, we have forms uh, of policy manuals available through my firm where it will probably save you a lot of time uh, not having to go through a piecemeal. It will be more cohesive and, and you can review it as one whole body uh, of policy work. And I think it's just go a lot faster. It'll be more efficient that way. And it was also brought up by Trindle that we are able to, like once again brought up this time by Trindle, that we are able to simply refer to the existing law as opposed to providing um, all of that context uh, within our own law, um, which could have advantages. Speaking yes. to the conflict of interest policy? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I just have a comment on that. So I was the one that kind of said, well, let's not just refer to the law, because I guess my experience is when you refer to the law, the law is complicated and you have to go find it. And it, it, as a director, it's not just an easy reference. Oh, what is this conflict of interest policy if you read it? So that was just my perspective that I thought the conflict of interest laws were complicated and are complicated and not very understandable. If you're looking at a policy manual that just refers to the law, somebody looking at that wouldn't really digest what the true conflicts of interest policies are. But sure, I, I don't mind the other way. Well, because and, and to, to expand on that point, really that brings up three things. One, what does the law provide? Uh, two, how can that be uh, provided to people upon inquiry, like as a paper copy? And then three, how would people access that electronically? To the first point, the, the Fair Political Practices Act actually, the regulations enacting that uh, provide for a model of conflict of interest code. So the in this case, the regulations actually spell out a lot of the basic, uh, the foundation for having a conflict of, of interest and uh, policy. So it's all actually all set out in the right code of regulations, and I quoted that to the director. To the second point, you can actually incorporate those into a paper document. So you can say the, the Isla Vista Community Services District incorporates and refers to state law. Here are the laws, and you can just copy it and have it available in a paper copy. 
For an electronically accessed version, you can just have a hyperlink to say that the district incorporates these laws and have a hyperlink and it will refer it to the official version of the law that's held by the uh, state legislature. I get all that. I just don't find a conflict of interest policies and codes in the state law very clear about to the common person that isn't a lawyer. And so that's just my perspective. But I, I don't mind referring to the law and going back to where we were. Thank you. Director Brent. So this is another question for you because when I had reached out to someone who works at the county uh, clerk or quarters office, she had led me to believe that for conflict of interest codes, one of the things that that PPC regulations require us to do, just if specifically for the conflict of interest, interest policy, is actually spell every part of it out in our own code, and that that can't just be done by reference. So, do you, well, are the, you aware? Well, right. So, for example, the definitions. One of the questions that was given mm -hmm. to me was, uh, how are we going to define income? Uh -huh. And one of the suggested definitions for income, as as the board was considering, went well beyond or was actually conflicted with mm -hmm. what the definition was under the Fair Political Practices Act. Okay. So in that type of a situation, you wouldn't want to promulgate a local policy that's in conflict with state law. That's right. Because it would be preempted. So you want to make sure that it's consistent. The way I described it to Director Freeman is, is if state law provides a floor, you can't go below that. And if state law provides a ceiling, you can't go above that. So as long as you're operating within those parameters, you're, you're going to be fine. Yes, the district has to adopt a code that's required. Uh, what is specifically laid out, there are many provisions that can be simply incorporated and refer to uh, the, the, reg the code of regulations, uh, or in some cases, the provisions of the government code that, that spell that out. And the, the model policy manuals that, that we have through my firm do just that. And so I think what would be efficient is for us to prepare that with the district in mind, provide that to the uh, to the policy committee, and have them consider that. And if that is consistent with the goals that the board wants to set, that the committee wants to set, and then recommend to the board as the policy direction for the which way the district wants to go, then we will make amendments accordingly. Because you may want to uh, adopt certain uh, transparency guidelines that are more transparent. It, and ultimately that's a policy that the board will have to, to weigh in on. But if you start from a foundation that complies with the law and then you go above that if it's provided, um, then that, that's fine. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other uh, committee reports? Oh, specifically committee reports? Or yes. Reports no, well? we're still in committee okay. reports. Um, and as far as uh, un university negotiations, we've met, but we'll uh, discuss that once we get to the agenda item. Um, okay, we have no more uh, committee reports. Uh, we'll now go to director's reports. Uh, I'll start off. On Friday, I attended the Isla Vista Alcohol and Other Drugs Working Group meeting. Um, it was uh, another good session with uh, the county's uh, behavioral wellness department as well as uh, alcohol and drug program and the foot patrol. Um, they're making progress with their uh, their new program, which is focused on coalition building, and they've. For uh, South County, they've allocated funding um, to a specific organization that's focused more on um, teenagers. So we're going to see how it can more play in with Isla Vista and reach out to young adults. So that was something we discussed. But also, I uh, shared uh, the results and uh, outcomes from our public safety town hall. Um, and I ha I'll be having some follow-up discussions with James McCarroll about, um, about the different ideas we discussed. On Monday, I'll be attending the Isla Vista Safe um, Sexual Assault Task Force meeting. Uh, it'll be the first one, and I'll be sure to report back to the board on that. And then on Wednesday, I'll be traveling back up to Sacramento uh, to speak on Assembly Bill 722 again. Um, it's now before the Senate Governance and Finance Committee, and it is being opposed by uh, CSDA and LAFCO, so they've asked for speakers to come up again. So uh, last time it was myself and Doss Williams. This time it'll be myself and Joan Hartman. Uh, so we'll be up there next week. And uh, Director Jordan? Um, okay. Um, over the past week, I had a meeting um, with the Executive Director of Associated Students regarding securing permanent funding from the Associated Students for an internship program. Um, as 
written into and applied to the Associated Students Legal Code for funding. Um, and also for adding an addition to the agenda for permanent CSD speaking time so that you guys don't have to wait if you decide to go talk. So that's what I did this week. Awesome. Uh, Director Brett? <coughs> Um, I don't have a whole lot to report. I was downtown at the County Board of Supervisors budget hearings this week, um, and I think that both of the things uh, that came out of that are agendized later. So other than that, nothing here. Cool. Director Freeman? So I attended the Isla Vista Community Network meeting, uh, and uh, in the capacity of uh, my direction to engage with the community on Municipal Advisory Council and gave a presentation on some of the background with relation to a Municipal Advisory Council and talked about the uh, major high-level type um, ways of constructing it um, that had been mentioned at the last meeting and had come up at our various AB3 setup meetings. Um, the feedback that I received was that um, even people who had been attending the AB3 meetings had apparently not actually paid any attention during the sections on Municipal Advisory Council and so there was <laughs> shock from the audience <laughs> and so there is uh, no uh, the, so the background that I expected to at least minimally have was not present so I'm going to be going and having longer more complicated discussions with people to attempt to brief them on, on what this would actually would actually mean um, and uh, yeah, I think that is I think that's all perfect uh, director hedges um, most of my activities, well, actually the last couple of weeks have been around uh, county behavioral wellness stuff, but um, a couple of the things that happened there um, uh, do definitely uh, relate to Isla Vista issues. Uh, in, in the years, uh, now it is years since uh, 23 May uh, 2014, 14, we, um, um, I, I've been called upon to enter into a lot of discussions around the community mental health aspects of, of that event, uh, particularly as it relates to Isla Vista. And um, uh, I just want to report back, there was a, um, a very promising two, two and a half day training that I participated in on um, psychological first aid that came out of, um, in, in many ways, out of the Santa Barbara Response Network's response to uh, the events of that night. And um, I just have to report that um, Isla Vista is being seen by many as leading in the whole community mental health question. Partly out of our pain, there has come something that I think is very promising. And um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to be very much involved in that over the coming years. Awesome. Uh, Director Geis? I was on vacation, so I think I came back and I looked Sweet. at the agenda in minutes <laughs> and had a brief conversation with Gina. Um, and just know that we got some positive results out of the Board of Supervisors, and I think we should be very thankful to the third district because um, to get what they got, uh, required some negotiation, um, and it was nice to see that we got you know, four fifths vote to get something done. Absolutely, that's really cool. Awesome, <coughs> Director Thurlow. Yes. Okay. Uh, now on to uh, report from council. I already addressed the uh, the question that uh, Director Freeman brought up. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is to go through the, the prior actions of the board and where available the, the committees just to kind of make sure that everything that had been done uh, was copacetic. And I, I know that the board has been acting in the best interest of the district and you're hamstrung to a certain extent by the fact that you're wearing the hats as directors, as elected, elected officials, but you're also acting your own administrative staff with the assistance of, of the interns and that can be uh, very complicated because you can't all meet together to discuss everything and to you know get things done in a way that I'm sure that you would like to do uh, so part of what the, the board will consider tonight is related to that effort uh, and going back through and trying to where necessary uh, provide a little bit of legal rehabilitation uh, on previous actions and, uh, and to make sure that everything is, is good moving forward. Uh, 
my a lot of what I'm going to be doing is tr trying to make sure that a strong legal foundation is set for the district <coughs> so that moving forward you will feel confident that all of those bases are covered and you can focus your attention on the policy making aspects of, of, of your job and to engender trust with the uh, with the public and uh, with members of, of, of the district um, most of the time I will probably take this opportunity to give you a report on where I'm at uh, and also to bring to uh, the board's attention uh, any events that came to my notice that uh, might be relevant uh, for the board's consideration either at the committee level or uh, or at the uh, at the board level uh, and that concludes my report for today yes uh, mr. Trindle it, it would be nice if you could give us at, at some point in the future just some practical ways that um, we could interact with having without having all these you know I'm, I'm I don't talk to anybody on this board because you know we, we get Brown Act violations and that they're, they're you know when you're ahead of the formation committee and you got three people that I, I guess I could talk to Ethan because <laughs> you know that's the only person that I'm ready to pick up the phone and say hey Ethan what about, what about this or what should we do with this and so it's just really uncomfortable about from my old position you know working in county government I was free to talk to whoever I want because I wasn't on the board and we got stuff done but in this situation it just seems much more difficult to get things done and I'm just looking for some practical ways to get around I don't mean to get around it maybe if we had a general manager and could go through the general manager or we could go through you it might be some more practical ways to, to get some communication going but I just find it that the that that I, I feel hamstrung on doing a lot of things what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and put together a practical guide that addresses yeah, that, that, cool. that obviously honors the, the intent uh, and the letter of the law with respect to the Brown Act, but also tries to give you some options on how to coordinate with each other. Yeah, something to keep in mind is, is that you, you're not prohibited from interacting with one another. You're just prohibited from talking about business that is, is coming before you or has a very high likelihood of coming before you. So if you get together and have pie, well, no, that's, that's fine. That, that's, but, not, that's not my concern. I'm sure. Mean, I mean, in terms of more efficiently doing business, and, and I don't mind the Brown Act and doing things in the open and doing it on the public agenda. I'm all for that stuff. I just don't find it very efficient that I can't call up another committee member and say, hey, I'm going to put this item on the agenda. How do we put it on? Or what should the content of that be? You know, we get it onto the committee agenda and it's not worded right and we can't discuss what you really want to get done so that's what I'm just looking for some practical ways around that you know I guess in in county government you use the CEO to kind of broker those agenda items and they come back in terms of staff reports and we're, we're working on that too um, and, and getting some of that going but I don't know if there's other practical things we could do the, the biggest impediment is the fact that each of your committees are made up of members of the, of the legislative body yeah. and, and specifically <laughs> under the Brown Act that's called out that it has to be a Brown Act body yeah. and you have to observe those those issues or those concerns um, what I would suggest is consistent with what your experience is, is that when you have somebody who is administrative staff you can work through that person to address a lot of those efficiency concerns part of that will be taken on uh, by me it's going to be a little bit more focused on you know the legal aspects and less on the administrative stuff but certainly it's easy if you have an issue like this wasn't worded right how should we word this you can send that to me I'll look at it and I'll rearrange things or you know what have you uh, another for, for today and briefly, another thing is to use the interns as uh, as your de facto administrative staff. Uh, until you have a general manager, until the funding will support more robust administrative uh, side of things, you know th that will be a good uh, resource for the, for the board to use at the committee level and at, at the board level. Uh, but I'll still I'll put together a, kind of a, a practical guide. Yeah. Uh, with the with the do's and don'ts in very yeah. plain language that hopefully will provide some guidance. Thanks. Awesome. Any other questions before we move on? 
none. Okay, uh, so we'll now uh, go on to the consent agenda, looking at uh, the minutes from the June 8th and June 6th meetings. Does anyone see any uh, corrections needed? I, I only had a question. Would this be the appropriate time? I think there was a, a, a item on the minutes where they referred um, an item back to the formation committee. I think it was about hiring the general manager. I, I see, yes. Item 4.5. Is that on the... Uh, on page 5 of the minutes. Oh yeah, we have a we don't have a second on that one. No, that's on the June sixth meeting. That, yeah, that's oh. correct. Is it there? Okay, so we have to I'm go. I'm not sure. Is that Jay? Do you happen to know if that meeting is online? Uh, that one is not yet online. Okay. I have I mean, actually well, the audio of it is. Yeah. I have a URL for it, but I don't have the video for it yet. Right. So I guess but, what, my well, only question regarding the minutes, it's referred back to the formation committee for further review. So if I'm doing the agenda for the formation committee, do I, what further, re, I'm not sure what the further review is and how I would agendize that, that item so that we could further review, I don't know. Well, it sounds like the committee will be continuing discussions about hiring a general manager. We don't have we don't have to so we'll put it on in general broadly like we agendized it before and yeah I okay. yeah I, I think it's the same thing I just way. didn't understand why it failed that the yeah. regular committee that it came is coming back again well okay so we'll, there's well, a, if, a, if a larger we background the, about why it's coming back but we can I think talk about do we are we agendized to talk about that later um, in, in any event um, I, I think Broad is usually good for the agenda items. Okay. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know if there was a specific reason we were trying to solve a specific problem, but if it's broad, we'll bring it back broad and we can figure it out there. Yes. And um, as far as the second that's missing here, I think we need to go back into the recording and figure that out uh, for this to be brought back to be approved at our next meeting. Um, unless anyone happens to remember who seconded that. Wasn't Can we just am, approve so the meeting with <laughs> all relevant edits, or approve the minutes with the edit to 4.5? Yeah, I, I do think that would be okay. Uh, is, is that a motion you have? Uh, yeah, well, since we're in consent, um, I, we might have to pull it, so I'll pull that item and we'll consider it. Um, I, hold on, where are we? Um, I move the approval of the minutes of the June 8th, 2017 special meeting. Wait, never mind. There's send. <laughs> I move the approval of the minutes of the June 6th regular meeting uh, with necessary edits to item 4.5. So we can do that. Um, is there a second? I second. Okay, there's a second. Uh, Mr. Trindle, is that something that that is legally sound? What are the revisions that you need? So uh, there's on item 4.5, uh, right. the second isn't written in here. And uh, what we're trying to do is vote to approve it uh, for and for the secretary to go back and watch the video and just throw in the name of, of who that who that second was. Are there any other substance? Do we, do we know that there was a second for sure and that it was a proper motion? I have it in my notes that it was a 5002 for that particular item. I'm sorry, the question on the floor is can, can you approve the minute subject to the revision of adding in the second as long as there's no opposition from the board? Is there any opposition? I'm here. Thank you. Okay. So we can do that? Yes. Okay, okay so um, we have a uh, motion made by Brant, seconded by Jordan, um, and that's approval of the minutes of the uh, June 6th, or is that the June 8th? June 6th. June 6th meeting with necessary edits to item 4.5. Any uh, public comment? Any more board discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 7-0. Um, Director Brown. Motion Burke. to approve the balance of the consent agenda. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion is to approve the balance of the consent agenda made by Brant, seconded by Jordan. Uh, any public comment? 
Any more board discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 7 0. Um, at this time, we will enter into public comment. Any member of the public may speak on matters within the subject, matter jurisdiction of the Board of Directors that are not on the agenda. The Board will not take action on any item not on the agenda except as provided by law. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in public comment today? Okay. Uh, no public comment. So now we'll enter into uh, Section 4, Discussion and Action Items. First up, we're considering the adoption of a resolution of the Board of Directors um, establishing standing and ad hoc committees, memberships, responsibilities, and powers. Um, Mr. Trindle, if you want to introduce this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the Board. If you consider the, the staff report that was provided with the resolution, mm -hmm. I've seen in my packet here. Is that just a minutes packet? May I, may I just copy that? Probably uh, it's on, the, on the back page of the agenda. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the, the staff report, I summarize the, the basis for it and kind of connects back to what I was saying to the board before during the general counsel's report. Uh, the purpose of the adoption of this resolution is to, to take a formalized action. And by that I mean to take a formalized action that clears up the motions that the board has been uh, using to carry out uh, exercising some of its powers uh, in the past. It is perfectly appropriate for the board to act by motion. However, it creates something of an unclear record as to who has done what and what that means and if something is being referred back to a formation committee uh, and it's not spelled out exactly in the minutes then there's confusion that's generated from that uh, etc et so in consideration of the fact that uh, concerned members of the community may not have uh, materials before them that sets forth the who the committees are who are on the committees, what their exact uh, jurisdiction is, what it is that they're supposed to be looking at, that clears all of this up, as it attempts to. Uh, so it would uh, reincorporate the actions of the board that it took previously to establish certain standing committees. Uh, it would also roll in the action of the board that it took the last meeting to make an ad hoc committee, uh, and it would set forth the relevant information uh, for quick ease of reference for members of the board. Uh, committee members, also members of the public, to help uh, with transparency and communicating um, uh, what the what the board is doing and how it's going about doing. It. Any questions that I can answer? Uh, uh, first, Director Freeman, then Director. Brown. So the well, there, there, there are two things. There are two things about it. Um, one of which is is that. Um, I, I think it's missing one of the committees, and I don't remember which one, but I think it's the University uh, Negotiation Ad Hoc Committee. Um, and uh, in addition to that, it also uh, goes out of its way to specify that uh, committees will use Robert's Rules of Order. That was really kind of a placeholder. I wasn't sure if you were, it sounded like you were using Robert's Rules uh, for conducting uh, board meetings, and I assumed that that was being handled the same way at the committee level, but if you use Rosenberg's or some other form, that can be replaced. It was just really a placeholder. Okay. Well, we're, currently, we're using a. Um, uh, I mean, at the committee level, we, we just can run meetings. Okay. Um, and uh, and that was why, particularly at the committee level, I was like, we can add Robert's Rules of Orders to the committee level. No, just, you certainly don't. Have to. <laughs> and at the board level, we have we've kind of a cobbled together set of uh, set of things. We've been discussing at policy committee what to do about it, but it was just this particular <coughs> like assigning the committees full Robert's Rules of Orders. So that was okay. Right? You don't need to do that. Just anyway. So the, the the committee that was missing, uh, which one was that? In the university negotiation ad hoc committee. Uh, it's a committee which is. Um, you, you can describe it. Not me. So um, the well, I'm going to pull up the exact uh, charge that it was created for, um, but the committee is responsible for working with UCSB administration um, to. Uh, create a plan for sp uh, spending the allocated grant uh, and the services that that pays for. Okay. And the uh, members of the committee? Uh, myself, Director Hedges, and Director Thurlow. 
you said it's an ad hoc committee, correct? Yes. Okay. And what's the intended time and the duration of that of that committee? Um, that is for um, that was set up specifically for the 2017 um, for the for the the 2017 grant. So through uh, through the end of the year. Uh, Director Freeman. Um, so I, one, one, I guess, uh, question that we'd had about that, I, it might be that Ethan had already asked somebody, maybe with you, uh, but they had that, um, so the three people who are on it, one of them is George Thurlow, um, who had actually requested to, or stated to not be on the committee because he's sitting on the other side. Uh, mm -hmm. And so do we consider him part of the committee because he is there at that meeting, or do we not consider him part of the committee because he is not representing the district at the meeting, or like, or does he have to, like, what's, what's going on? <coughs> So in the, <laughs> it's an excellent question. So in the context of the meeting, you, Director Thurlow, you're operating in your capacity as representative of the university. Okay. Uh, in that case, as I am, as I sit here now. Sure. Uh, 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 but you're a, an appointed member of the the, the public body of the of, of the district. The. This may be a longer conversation than, uh, than the, the meeting is the best forum for, but uh, for, just from the, the sounds of it, it is as if, I'm trying to figure out which hat you're wearing. So <laughs> Ethan, Ethan's position was that since I was sitting in the meeting, therefore I should, it should be disclosed mm -hmm. that I'm in the meetings, mm -hmm. okay? And so I think he put me on the committee simply so there'd be transparency that I was in on these meetings. Mm -hmm. But um, if it's your advice that I not be part of the CSD's committee, that's fine. There's no way I can excuse myself from the negotiations. Right. And it, from the sounds of it, the, <coughs> the negotiations require you to act first with the interest towards the university, in which case that would create a conflict for you with respect to negotiations for the district. So my my recommendation. It, yeah, and at some point you should noodle what that conflict is, because I'm not. Sh I've always taken the position there may not be a conflict between the University of California and the state uh, uh, created community services district. And if there is, what is that conflict? Any more than there would be a conflict if I sat on LAFCO and I was, a mem and I was also a member of the uh, sewer district. Right. In those cases, the law provides for something which is called uh, uh, incompatibility of office. But that typically arises in a situation where you have an, a person who is an elected official for two different boards. Here you are, I'm using this term loosely, mm -hmm. an officer of the university may not have that same implication. Um, so what I would need to do is to research the extent of the conflict, and as you suggested, maybe there isn't one that exists, uh, and then provide guidance on how best to do that. In the meantime, you can formulate the committee. Has the committee even met yet? Yes. OK. Has any action been taken by the, the ad hoc uh, subcommittee? Uh, just discussions with the university. OK. Okay. Well, I think to the extent that that can continue, that's good because it's the dialogue between the university and the district. But the, the ad hoc committee doesn't have any power that's been delegated to that. Is that correct? Right. All all is just advisory to the yeah. board of directors. Okay. So the in the end, the the approval is going to come from the board. There isn't any type of approval that has our authority that's been given to the ad hoc committee to approve anything. Right. Okay. With that, then I think that the, I would suggest that the committee can continue to meet to discuss as long as it's not taking any type of action. In the meantime, I'll, I will research Director Thurlow's question and present that at the next, uh, the next regular board meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll put together a report on what that, uh, that research uh, turns up. But in the meantime, for the purposes of this resolution that obviously is gonna need some revision, um, University Relations Ad Hoc Committee uh, negotiations. Negotiations. Yep. So President Bertrand, Dr. Hedges, Dr. Thurlow, with members through through the end of the calendar year 2017 is the is the period of the 
the committee's existence? Yeah. Does it have a, a set meeting time? No. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, the other point, sorry. The, no, 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 the no. other point that really should be made is the, the university's position is it's not going to negotiate in public how, how it plans or what it plans to do with this grant. Sure. Um, and that's, you know, any more than the Santa Barbara Foundation would say, hey, we're going we're gonna to have a public meeting where the whole public's invited. So that's another little twist to it. But right. as you ponder this. I will ponder it. Yeah, and I can send you the specific language which enacted it. That would be great. Yeah, and and to avoid having four members in, a, in that negotiation, could we have that committee just be two? If Director Thurlow was going to be in the room, you run into the the Brown Act issue again, where if the entire subcommittee is made up of members of the legislative body, then it has to be a Brown Act body, and that's going to come into conflict with the practical aspects of the fact that the university is not does not want to engage in, and have this be as part of a public <coughs> forum. I'm going to have to do. I'm not going to be able to give you an answer tonight. The answer that, that covers the different combinations and permutations. Um, I'll need to, to do some research, provide a detailed memo to make sure that everything is spelled out very clearly and on the up and up on, on both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Grant. The last thing I I just wanted to say is thank you for writing this resolution. I really sympathize with the idea that we should try to do more by resolution than less by motion. Do you think, and this is a little bit off topic, but do you think that um, it would be appropriate for interns to prepare resolutions, uh, say if during something like future agenda items, we all said, well, we would like a, a resolution to be prepared for our consideration on this topic? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. that, okay. that is a perfect function for the interns. They can use this as, as a guide. And then when they prepare that, send it to me. I can make sure that it meets all of the legal requirements, and then it can be added to the to the board's agenda. That's a that's an excellent use of the limited resources that the district has. That's great. Thank you. Are are there guidelines in a resolution of when something's aware as, and then when something? Is? Yeah. The and one of the <coughs> one of the issues that came up at the meeting of the sixth was standard language for what's called the enacting clause. So the whereas is a word called recitals. And basically, those are the findings of the elected body in leading up to. This is the wind up on before they're going to actually throw out the ball, which is the, the resolution itself. Those are considered to be findings of the elected body. So they're important because they establish what the body itself as a whole considered in coming to its collective decision. Because the individual thoughts of each person as an elected and appointed official generally is not subject to fly specking and scrutiny. It's what the board does as a group in enacting something or not enacting something that, that ends up being uh, critical for, for future consideration. So the whereas clause is established specifically what it is that the board considered before it then took the action that it took after the now, therefore, let it be resolved that. And or in the, the case of an ordinance, enacting an ordinance. Do the whereas is generally help explain? Yes. Okay. They're more of an explanation leading into what the action is. It can be an explanation as to the policy reason. Yeah. It can be an explanation as to the authority that is the basis for the action. It, it really is a kind of the story uh, behind what the action is being taken, why it's being taken, what the impetus was, etc. Uh, so, any other? Do you need a motion? Um, well, my question would be for you. Uh, do you think we should approve the the balance of this and then come back uh, to amend it? What I, I you can do that. Uh, that's certainly an option. To uh, you would adopt it as written, and then I could prepare an a, uh, an amended resolution. Another alternative is you simply continue it to the next meeting and I can provide the, the fully revised version based on the feedback uh, that I've been given and the direction by the board. Excellent. So I'll move approval of item 4.1. All second. Okay. Um, and do we want to add any 
any of the language there? No. Just leave I mean, it if, you're, if you're going to bring it back, I don't think we need to put that into a motion. Right. Okay. Director Freeman? I thought the idea was that we could either approve this and then come back with an amendment, or we could continue it. Um, that, that's why. And, and I, 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 to me, it feels like we should continue it, because otherwise if we approve this, aren't we just essentially disbanding the University Ad Hoc Committee, because this disbands all committees and replaces them with this thing? It's not intended to undo any prior action. It's intended to uh, to rate any questions that may have been raised before. It's intended to put all of those to rest. Since it was a, it was a really a drafting error on my part, I didn't know that there was one based on the committee minutes. That I didn't even to do it. I was no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the one of the interns helped provide the information to me as I was putting this together, and the the negotiations ad hoc committee just wasn't one that was on e either of our radar. Um, it, it's up to the board. I, we, we but but it, do it, either way. it does cool. say here that any other committee that may have been created by prior board action and that may still exist is hereby dissolved. Is resolution. the yes, that's yeah. true. So is the is so the, then we shouldn't have for this for the time being. That's <laughs> just okay, just for cleanliness. Yeah. Let's table it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to ask for my my suggestion, I would mm -hmm. say continue it. Yeah. Because the purpose of this is to make everything clear. The last thing you want to do is break it into pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'll be happy to put this on our next agenda. Do you want a motion directing you to? Uh, no, nope, you can just simply direct the, the common parlance says we will direct staff to bring back a revised version of the resolution for consideration at the next meeting. And that's what Excellent. I'll do. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, we have to vote down our motion. I'll withdraw. I'll withdraw. I'll withdraw. Okay. My motion. Friendly. <laughs> it's strong. All right. Any other uh, comment on this item? Any public comment? Uh, Jeremy? Yeah, so I had a question. Um, sorry, I don't, uh, Council, I don't know you for. Ross, Trendle. Ross? Okay. Um, so you had mentioned something about um, subcommittees uh, in terms of the possibility that they'd be made of members other than just the uh, board of directors. In, in this resolution, there that's not something that's contemplated. In the future, there may be an occasion to create a committee that has, for example, members of the public who sit on those committees. But at least the, the committees that are listed in this resolution are only uh, for the formation committee, the policy committee, the budget ad hoc committee, and the next right. version will have the, the negotiation ad hoc. But how the Brown Act applies to subcommittees would change if there were members of the public on them. So for that, saying, yes, for that okay. particular one, the, the question will be if it's the majority is made up of, a, of legisl uh, elected or appointed officials. That There's a specific Brown Act provision that applies to that. Okay. Yeah. Director Freeman. Um, I just remind me that I had one more question about this. Um, so, for example, the Budget Ad Hoc Committee um, shall comply with the Ralph M. Brown Act Government Code 54950. Um, You've mentioned that um, you used the term Brown Act body a little bit. Um, my uh, minimal interaction with this this has been with the um, uh, County of Santa Barbara um, uh, uh, and then uh, San Inez Band of Chumash Indians um, Negotiations Committee where they had a um, uh, less than quorum uh, committee but then they decided to make it a and they I think that they were using the term Brown Act body or make it a Brown Act committee uh, and then it was a public notice committee is your intention to convert the budget ad hoc committee into a notice committee or is it has to be a Brown Act body because of the, the membership of, of the committee. So when you say when you say Brown Act body, I guess make certain that we're on the same page. It has to be noticed and public meeting. Correct. And even with less than a quorum of the board, it's comprised solely of members of the legislative body. There's a specific provision in the Brown Act that says that if it's made up only of people who sit on the legislative body, it has to be an open meeting. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, any other questions in this section? No. Okay. We're going to move on, and uh, we're there, going there to. Was, there was public oh, sorry. Multiple people. Oh, we got multiple people. Uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Uh, so, I wonder if you guys talked about the membership of the budget committee, and you notified your attorney of the. Yes, yeah, so that was actually something I meant to bring up at the um, the committee reports at the beginning. Um, I've decided that for uh, the membership of that committee, it'll be myself, Director Brandt, and Director Geis uh, to work on just preparing a recommended budget for fiscal year 1718. 
Can you say those names again, please? Uh, yep. Myself, uh, Spencer, Brant, and uh, Bob. Guys. Thank you. Yes. Jeremy. Yeah, and I just wanted to find out if I'm interpreting this correctly. Then uh, the committees or subcommittees that are already in existence, um, since those are all made up of uh, board members only, those have to be Brown Act committees. That's correct. And open to the public. Correct. I have notice and. Okay. Yes, I'm looking at the exact provision now since it, it seems to be a, a point of interest. And that would include the ad hoc committee? Yes. Yes, that would be fantastic. Thank you. And while uh, Mr. Trindle's pulling that up, I'll just say um, <coughs> after this item, we're going to go uh, 4.3, 4.4, um, and then we'll come back to 4.2 just because we have the third district supervisor here, and those are all items of interest. Would it be better for us to come back to that last part for information, or? Uh, just want to see. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got it. I just got to find the exact one. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so now we'll go to 4.3, office space. Um, at the June 14th meeting of the Board of Supervisors, uh, the final day for the budget deliberations, uh, $9,000 was set aside in the fiscal year 17-18 budget for um, office space for the Isla Vista Community Services District in exchange for services uh, provided. Um, as was mentioned at the meeting, those services may include um, overseeing the operation of this room, uh, the use of this room, and then also uh, what we've already been doing with um, bringing together um, interests and, um, and public discussion on community outreach of uh, local government's matters. Uh, and why we wanted to have this on here today was to uh, offer some direction to either myself or another member of the board to um, send a letter to the county or otherwise initiate discussions um, for uh, prompting an agreement. Um, and to also discuss anything that we may want to see in such an agreement. Um, does anyone want to start off? Well, I, I would just I would just say that I, I think it'll also be important for us to come up with a brief set of procedures for how the management is going to be done on our side internally, um, because um, you know it strikes me as something that's fairly simple for us to be managing this room. When I talked to Rodney, he told me that it's just an Outlook calendar, but we should have that stuff in writing for everyone's clarity. Um, because one of the questions that I had uh, for Ross regarding this, and I guess I'll wait a moment since he's speaking to a member of the public, but was whether or not the interns can be involved in the management process of that calendar. Um, because I think that that would be something that we should pursue if that is the case. Um, but other than that, I really want to thank you, Supervisor Hartman, for all the work that you and your staff did uh, to be able to get this uh, in the budget. Uh, granted, a little bit at the last second, but we really appreciate it. Um, and uh, we, were, Jonathan and I, were there to speak on it, but couldn't get a word on word in. But that's okay. Uh, it seems as everything worked out well. So, um, yeah, that's that's really all I have to say. Yeah, I would add, thank you. This is a really important uh, moment for the history of this district, and mm -hmm. um, I know that you went the extra mile to make this happen, and so thank you. Can I speak? Please. <laughs> it was our great pleasure, and we thank you for all. I, I think some of you were working on some of my colleagues, and that made it easier for me. <laughs> but you wouldn't think for nine thousand dollars you'd have to fight so hard. That's <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> uh, Director Freeman. Um, so I will, I will prefix this just in case uh, at some point during this it, 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 
the, this concept gets lost. I, I also thank uh, uh, Harvin for uh, for doing this, and I, I um, I'm, the end result of my comments are going to be on the positive slant of this. Um, but I, I must say that I'm not without concerns. Um, when I uh, um, so I've, I've been involved in conversations talking about what to do with the community center now for uh, nearly three years, uh, and um, going back to meetings that were done at the food co-op with Jonathan Abood, um, and the um, thought process in my mind had always been that the level of staff and the level of uh, services that would be available and being provided to that, I don't think that we are up to the task to be able to perform right now, and I'm not certain when we'll be able to. Um, I have always then assumed that the entity that would be best set up for this would be the park district, and that was something where going in and putting in the um, Measure O, um, which when it was originally conceived, uh, and I was involved in the original conception process, the community center was an aspect of that. Uh, and the idea then to essentially um, make this, this services trade and then in order to uh, skip that to the community services district um, where we've already, for example, um, just as a user of the existing services have driven the park district to wit's end over us borrowing and losing keys and having complexity with relation to that. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned from the community's perspective of, of us taking on that challenge. That said, I'm also on the board of this district uh, and being on the board of this district and knowing the challenges that we have with respect to funding for this district and the amazing benefit that we'll have to having an office for this district. Um, it's something where it, it, my responsibility to this district is such that I, I would feel like it would be wrong for me to then say, well, no, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do this because um, this was an amazing deal that's getting constructed in order to allow this lifeline to the community service district. Um, but I, 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 I am conflicted going, in, going into this thought, um, and it is something where it is, it, it doesn't, it's not essentially a slam dunk to me that this is, this is great. Um, I, I feel like there's just this, this balance between the needs of the, of the community having the strongest rollout of the community center, which we're hoping to have online in such a short period of time, and which will be so important to make everyone feel comfortable with it, and knowing that, well, if we're in charge of doing the services for it, we'll get an office, and then we can do other stuff for the community. And uh, Supervisor Hartman. It's, thank you. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to give a little background, if I might, for those who weren't at the meeting or may not. Uh, there is $9,000 in the budget that covers your utilities and the rent for a year, for a fiscal year. And that is in exchange for services yet to be determined. One idea we put forward is to be a point of presence in this building. Another idea we put forward was to manage the key for this room, the community resources room. As yet to be determined is the community center. We are waiting to hear whether we're going to get a grant. If we do get the grant, that will postpone uh, perhaps through at least the end of the calendar year, and perhaps longer, maybe the fiscal year, uh, till, till we open that building. I want to take this opportunity, though, to thank Rodney Gould, who has managed the key to this uh, really gratis. He's done it and he's done a superb job and we did consult with him uh, whether it, he would be, you know, if, if he's happy to get it off his plate. I think he would have liked to be compensated. I think he's a good partner for the CSD and is willing to, uh, to hand off the key for your management. And, and so we still need to negotiate this and uh, you, the, the CSD needs to have insurance and we need to have a written contract. I don't think you necessarily need to write a letter. I think we can just have a meeting. Uh, Gina can add to this because she's met with the director of the General Services Administration after the meeting uh, to flesh out what an agreement might look like. So a couple things that I think might be um, pertinent to this conversation is um, we're going to work with general services they they just need the, the president of the board to sign any any agreement on their end and so i think ideally um, i can work with ethan um, to come up with a contract of what the scope of work would look like as supervisor hartman mentioned um, one of the benefits and to be Further be clear, we're talking about the key management for this room and not the community center, which is a separate building at this, um, time. At this time in this contract. And so, of course, the office is just on the other side of the wall there. And so it would be to help operate the key for this room. 
um, and that you know having the CSD in that office as a point of pre presence is a bit one of the benefits to the County of Santa Barbara. Um, and so ideally we the, the, um, we would like to get that office open on July 1st, which gives us a short time to get the contract together um, that you guys would, would, would go into with the county um, with general services. As Joan mentioned, you, you will need to have liability insurance to have that um, utilities and like electricity is covered, but um, for phone and internet, should you decide you want that, that will be an extra cost that's not included in the $9,000. Um, and I think somebody else asked a question. The $9,000 is going to, it came through the county budget. It's not going to go through you guys through your, it's just going to go from one county account to the other in exchange. And I th when you talk about insurance, I think we want to make sure we have general liability insurance. We don't need uh, building insurance or property insurance. No, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're on our way to getting insurance, I think, and we just have to, it's on our agenda for this meeting. So, what a good proposal. Director Jordan? When you're talking about the Wi Fi, I thought that this building was on the university Wi Fi. So, that might suffice for you. I'm just saying just what saying is not included from the county's perspective. Just kidding. <laughs> right. okay. so oh, <laughs> Director Freeman? Yeah. I mean, I will put out, I, I, even, even though, even though I'm sometimes hired by the university, they don't give me Wi-Fi access for weird reasons, so I'm always on the county's version of the Wi-Fi, which is this access point right here. <laughs> um, oh, but okay. The, uh, Sorry, yeah, so yes, when, when on the first day of the budget workshops, um, and I, 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 I Try failing to pull up the wording right now, but the, the wording had been that it would include the community center when that building became operational, something along those lines. Uh, and so is that something that I, I it was, the, the second day I know with the spreadsheet and the actual wording on there, and also I know there's some of the, the way that this happens in the actual, like um, the more closed iterations. I'm not, uh, how, so this we will were, not include We were center? throwing out ideas, okay. and again, we, um, we aren't sure yet what we're going to need at the community center, but, uh, we understand there has to be a lot of community involvement and that indeed IV Reckon Parks has a long history and we've got to coordinate this. But we're just not sure what we have to coordinate yet until we know about the grant, until we have a sense of timing. So um, that was just front-loading ideas about what the CSD could do that would be worth $9,000 so that we have a way to say we're getting public benefit from this exchange and we don't have a long list of other special districts asking the county for money and we aren't showing any favoritism to you. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank and um, so, Gina, we will uh, be in touch to, to work on developing an agreement to bring back to the board uh, to hopefully be approved by uh, July 1st. When you're next, today's the 20th. So from, based on what we have to accomplish before the end of the month, we will be having a special meeting. Um, we'll talk later about when that might need to be, okay. uh, but yes. Excellent. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, and with that, does anyone want to have a motion to direct me to work with the county to develop an agreement? Uh, Director Brandt? Uh, I move to direct President Bertrand to work with all relevant departments and offices at the county to develop an agreement for services to be rendered by the community services district second second okay um and at the end of that do we want in exchange for office space it doesn't mention office space at all in there oh in ex yeah friendly perfect <laughs> and let's just okay so we have directed the board president to work with all relevant departments and offices of the county to develop an agreement for services to be rendered by the Community Services District in exchange for office space made by Brant, seconded by Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, any public comment? Uh, Mr. Pragan? Um, yeah. I, cool. Um, so, all right. Uh, yeah, I wanted to use a fishing metaphor because it would be fun. But uh, Joan, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hook uh, a word that she used that we're not sure what we have to coordinate yet. Um, well, I'm pretty sure of what you guys will have to coordinate, and that's a delivery of the keys, and that's going to be somewhat problematic from my perspective. But essentially, not only because you have lost a couple, although that's really funny to me. In any case, um, I think one of the reasons that Rodney, who I spoke to earlier this week, 
uh, is interested in letting this go is because of the amount of time it takes him to coordinate, schedule, uh, deliver keys, open doors, etc. Um, essentially what happens is he spends a lot of his time answering emails, figuring out when people will use the space, uh, when he needs to hang the keys on the doors so that they're available and get them back so that he can hang it for the next person on the door. And essentially this idea of uh, being a, a stable presence in this building is a very good idea when you have staff that use the office for things, but I'm not sure what the stable presence will be in terms of directors who have school and or, I mean it's gonna be the summer, but school and or work priorities. Like, are you, there's always gonna be someone in the building. Director Brent? Well, I don't think anyone was mentioning that there's always gonna be someone in that office. I think what we had talked about and what I had asked Ross earlier was, is it copacetic for the interns to be involved in managing that? Or, you know, no, actually you were talking to him when I was gonna ask that. Is it copacetic for the interns to be involved in managing a, a scheduling and email system uh, for when this room is used and distributing keys? Yes. So I think that that will be something that I'll be very supportive of having the interns work on. And I think it's one of the reasons that we have interns in the first place. And I think on, on a broader note, I think that um, I think that we as a board probably understand best what it is that we as directors can handle in this quasi-administrative role that we are all playing. Um, and that's not to slight what you were saying, but I think that uh, from my perspective, I certainly have a pretty good handle on um, being able to accomplish this task. Yes, and one more thing I'll add, um, which is quite exciting is, that one of our powers is to operate community facilities and this is enabling us to do this in partnership with the county um, really the activation of one of our first powers in a, in a small way uh, which so that's something we're really grateful for and look forward to doing as a community service director guys and, and i think I, I agree with ethan when you look long term about what we're doing this is one of our long-term goals and this is the baby step that the county's giving us to operate this community room and we want to have the right idea we want this to be a community room that everybody can use and have equal access and give the county credit for offering this two hundred dollars per square foot room for free there you know to have community events here I mean this is this is great space and it, it works well for us but I'd like to know the volume right now of how many times has Rodney you know leased out this room and how much is it being used and I think we want to be able to track that and show the value of this space to to the community and us being responsible next door I think it's worth the risk mm -hmm. I, I get Jay's concerns that we're are we stretching ourselves and I think it's worth the risk to manage this room and I think we can put some effort to it and I think we'll be successful and I think it's a baby step in the right direction to our long-term goal that I think we are the right organization to run the community center in the long run but you know you know maybe that's not going to end up but I, I think that was the vision of what these two buildings should be used for mm -hmm. in the long run so and uh, we're going to have a few more things to discuss in, in this item, but real quick, just to the motion at hand, direct the board president to work with all relevant county offices and departments to develop an agreement for services to be rendered by the community services district in exchange for office space. Is there any more board discussion on that motion? Any more public comment? Uh, I'd just uh, like to say that it's exciting. Thank you. Thanks. I agree. Thank you. Awesome. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any um, abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Uh, Director Thurlow, you had your hand up right before I yeah. went there. Are we still on item 4.3? Yes. <coughs> uh, yes. I just wanted to say uh, this was an important critical step and I want to thank again, John, yeah. thank you for um, unblocking the university support. Uh, I think it was going to be problematic for the university to um, start putting money into the community services district without an office space. Um, I think there's opportunities in terms of providing a space for our interns 
and um, therefore providing equipment that can be used by our interns. And um, Susan and I are committed to obtaining uh, furnishings and office gear um, from donations. So as soon as you have an office, we'll start working on putting together some uh, donated equipment. Can you see in the trash in Isla Vista right now? Dude, oh my God, go to my front yard. Can I add just thank you for that because Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we're <laughs> I just want to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, do you have your hedges? Um, I, I was casting around for a, a historical analogy of some sort, and forgive me, the only one I could come up with was Lafayette coming to the aid of the fledgling republic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's lovely. Thank you. Virginia Woolf, a room of one's own. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say that I've joked to people before that my bedroom is the CSD office with all of the <laughs> records that we have in there. And I'm more than happy to get those into uh, an actual office space. Uh, so thank you again, Supervisor. Uh, we really appreciate it. This took everybody. This took all of us. So I'll, I'll take the thanks, but it was a group effort, and thank you, everybody. Sweet. Thank you. I'm going fishing more often. <laughs> <laughs> you soften people up. Um, sure, sure. So interesting, interestingly, I have a question on this agenda item, with, which is uh, to give to Trindle. Um, he's coming back in the room now. Perfect. Fantastic. Maybe we should Russ. speak about it. I'm sorry. So I have a question for you, and I'm actually, yeah, so I'm, there's, a, there's, there's at least some possible probability that you just got asked this. <laughs> um, okay. So, the, um, uh, so if we're providing equipment and we're providing space for the interns to, uh, to, to be operating out of, uh, at, what, at what point do we, is, is it start becoming comp complicated that the university is hiring them and we've listed them as contractors in our uh, Form 5805? Yeah, that was more or less the, the issue that was brought up to me and I was discussing uh, outside. I would need to, I don't know what the terms are of the engagement of the intern, so I would need to look at that in order to give you a complete answer. I, I don't know the question off the top of my, or the answer off the top of my head. Obviously the, the issue is going to be does it somehow transform them into employees or something along those lines and does it impact their filing status, so yeah, I need to, whatever it is uh, that governs their their internships, I would need to, to look at that. So is the question that you're that you're essentially posing that the university should not provide any equipment to this office? Um, or we have to file a different set of forms and come up with a different set of paperwork. Um, I mean, it's, there's a difference between uh, or actually, that's an interesting point. We said, you, you said the university would be would be providing the so if the university is providing the equipment then for the office and is providing the interns, then that also changes drastically because then it's not us providing. What if I just equipment. said it? What if I just found some trash no. on the side of the road, like uh, there is no? Hold on, hold on. I, I, think, I think we're getting off on. Uh, I I think we're mixing up a couple different things. The interns are consultants, not contractors, as defined mm -hmm. by the forms that we filed on their financial disclosure forms and they are employees of the university. So the question of whether or not they are contractors or employees isn't the same as it was when we were talking about a general manager because we would have been the person entering into an agreement with the person. Whereas we don't have an agreement with the interns, we have a MOU with the university and the university has their own independent agreements with the interns. But, but if we were to contract with a small LLC um, and then we were to provide all of the equipment that the people who work for that LLC are utilizing and we also expect that the interns cannot subcontract to other interns like the consultants that work for the consulting company who contracted cannot subcontract to other consulting companies, other consultants, at some point, we've actually essentially employed that entire thing. And I'm not like, I, when I bring this up, I mean, uh, George George brings up, well, are you trying to get us to not do anything? No, I'm trying to get us to do all the right paperwork. And I think it really doesn't correct. sound like it. It really doesn't sound like it at times. Well, I don't know, like, what, what, I just, what, what, what can I say other than maybe we need to file an 804 instead of 805 that would make you think yourself. that I'm just, that I'm not trying to just torpedo the entire district? 
No, I totally well, agree. I just feel like we're not, like, I thank you for being here so much because this completely, like, I love that you're here because this takes this entire discussion out of our hands because none of us are lawyers and we're all surmising things that we don't really know about. So we're literally talking about something that we're not going to figure out or pull out of thin air, so let's wait till next week. Yeah, That's so I, see I think uh, at the end of the meeting and future agenda items, we should discuss um, one for uh, considering the filing status of interns and how they, that may be at play with uh, expanded role of interns. Uh, Jeremy? Just a general um, comment. I really appreciate um, any time because I, uh, a comment was made earlier about the, uh, about the Wi-Fi, like isn't there Wi-Fi available, uh, made available by the university, but that's assuming this is a community services district for the entire community, not just for the university students. So um, those of SBCC or other non-UCSB students, it, the assumption that all well, UCSB Wi-Fi would be good enough is, is I think, a, a, a risky one. So going from that and extrapolating to, well, now we have this intern program and that they're paid for by the university and they're consultants for the services district. I think it is important to consider uh, what kind of perspectives they'll be offering and how those perspectives might be um, formulated, how they might be um, impacting the entire community, not just UCSB students. And uh, I think it is important to file the right forms and to ask these questions now Rather and figure it out now, rather than get caught up in some kind of problem later down the line. I think it's it just makes sense to do it right the first time. So that's that's just my two cents worth. Thank you. All right. Is there any other board discussion on item four point three office space? No. Okay. We're now moving to four point four. I love this foot patrol restoration of funding. Um, also on June 14th, the Board of Supervisors voted to uh, fully restore um, funding for the Foot Patrol. Thank you, Supervisor Hartman, for everything you did for that. Um, that and that involved um, a one-time funding of around $475,000 recommended by the CEO to be put back in the budget um, for a total of $1.89 million for this next fiscal year on the condition that um, in the meantime, the university and um, the count the county, UCPD, and the Sheriff's Office work together to develop a plan for moving forward in a sustainable way, um, something that uh, will will work as this station um, exists in the future. And it was brought up by a few um, members of the public and myself, and I believe you, that hopefully the CSD can have um, a point, uh, a, a role in that uh, discussion when it gets there. Um, the reason I brought this on here was to just kind of realize where we were at on that. Uh, we, we did uh, make a recommendation in this process, which I think was a wise choice, and um, it's really great where we've ended up on this. As far as um, the next step right now, and I don't think uh, there's an immediate um, step to be taken, but um, something for all of us to consider in the months ahead, uh, working with UCSB and the Sheriff's Office to uh, move forward in the best direction. Director Thurlow? Yeah, I think this uh, raises again the issue of whether you want to have a public safety committee um, because I do believe that uh, there is a lot of interest in having the CSD at the table as discussions begin and they'll begin relatively quickly about how to fund um, law enforcement at its current levels in Isla Vista. So we didn't we talk about a public safety committee at one point? Yes, but when we introduced the university negotiations ad hoc committee and realized a lot of the overlapping okay. jurisdiction, we went with the, the ad hoc. Well, but okay, so here's a question I have that relates to that is that if we have a public safety committee that is in the room for those conversations between UCPD, the university, and the sheriff's office and people from the county, and then we have a separate committee which is essentially just charged with. Uh, working with the university to uh, figure out how to spend the two hundred thousand dollars, as lo so long as our committee members don't speak to one another about things that are public safety related outside of meetings and continue to follow the Brown Act in the same way that they would with any other committee, then is is there an issue that is presented there? 
And I guess maybe the, I guess Let that's a question for you, Ross. I don't think so. Hey, uh, and actually, this is a good opportunity for me to uh, give the citation that I was looking for earlier. It's Government Code Section 54952B, and I uh, would give appreciation to Mr. Friggin. I misheard something, and I would correct something that I would say to, to Jeremy, um, who raised a good question. Uh, 54952 defines what a legislative body is, and you need that to know if the Brown Act applies, and that's the noticing uh, uh, provisions that Director Freeman was referring to before. So in subsection B, it tells you uh, what a legislative body is, and one of them is, uh, and then it tells you what it isn't, <laughs> and then it tells you what of that group that isn't, oh, j just kidding, there's an exception. So if you look through that, the, the key points are uh, advisory, However, advisory committees composed solely of the members of the legislative body that are less than a quorum of the legislative body are not legislative bodies, except that standing committees of the legislative body, irrespective of their composition, which have a continuing subject matter jurisdiction or a meeting schedule fixed by charter, ordinance, resolution, or formal action of a legislative body, are legislative bodies for purposes of this chapter. Getting back to the question that Jeremy asked me, would an ad hoc committee be, be covered by uh, the Brown Act, no, it wouldn't be, because it's not something that has, it's fixed uh, in time. And I apologize that uh, I, I jumbled up this when I was hearing it. Um, so in that case of the Relations Committee, if it's an ad hoc committee, then no, it would not be a Brown Act body. Uh, and that goes for irrespective of composition that you had asked me previously. So right. okay. my apologies, I, uh, I correct what I said uh, before. Your question, uh, Director Brandt, was the, the areas that each subcommittee you're covering, or each committee you're covering, one, public safety. If I understand your question, the intention would be to create a standing committee on public safety. If, if well, assuming that. It, you know, there, there are different ways. It could be an ad hoc committee, given the fact that my understanding of the, what the county did in their budget process is they classified these officers as one-time funds. They're in the budget for one time. And the purpose of talks between the university and the county are to figure out what the hell is going to happen with public safety, who's going to be responsible, who's going to be ponying up money, uh, and what the stipulations of such an agreement would be um, for in for the future. And so, my immediate thought was that that sounds more ad hoc, but um, there are all kinds of things that are public safety related that we may want to have a standing committee for. You right. Know, do you see what I'm saying? And, that, and that's, that's an important distinction. and It's the same distinction that was drawn in my mind. Typically, when we had clients that create public safety committees, the purpose is to review the policy. It's to review actions of the police department. Uh, it's like a citizen's review commission, uh, something along those lines. What I hear you saying is more along the lines of, of a kind of a budgetary uh, or a, a, an ad hoc kind of negotiating type of a, of a committee. So I guess the question I would put to the board is, is that within the jurisdiction of one of your committees that you're looking to, uh, you, you have acted on before or looking to establish with this resolution, or would you need to create another committee for that specific purpose? Or, or it might be that we're not the major player in public safety. The county is the major player. UCSB is the major player. Maybe we sit on their public safety committee. They're the committee. I yeah. mean, we're we're just we're a minor player on that yeah. committee, or maybe a minor, maybe a player in the future. But it doesn't seem like we should form a committee and invite them to the table and then have a Brown Act committee for telling them how to run their business. <laughs> it is. Plus, it won't work because yeah. we're not going to tell them how to the county how to. We're not going to tell the sheriff how to run his business because you know they need to negotiate that with UCSB. <laughs> They're the big boys in the room, and I, I can so. tell you that from practical experience, the if an entity isn't bringing something in terms of equipment or personnel or money, they have a tendency not to have a very strong voice in those situations. But we're, we're, we have the potential to bring money. Correct. Long yeah, term, yeah. but not major money. We're not going to. Yeah. We're not going to fully fund public safety yeah. in Isla Vista ever. Right. Right. And Director Hedges. 
However, um, we may not bring money and uh, 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 emergency vehicles and rolling stock and fire stations and all that stuff to the table. But we do bring all of these voters and all of the problems that have been here that relate to public safety issues. I mean, I sit right now on the Criminal Justice Task Force, which is, you know, a kind of a interagency, uh, interjurisdiction, all around the county kind of a thing, and a bunch of other things like that on several other committees. And I have been for decades bringing the voice of Isla Vista to it, and we need to be at that table. Yeah. Whether well, we've I got fire engines or not, whether whatever, we right. need to be at that table. I agree there. The director Philo. No, guys. Okay. No. I'm, I'm good. Cool. And and one thing I'll say is I, I did see this very close to a committee that we do have in place, the University Negotiations Ad Hoc, because when we formed that committee, we recognized that um, public safety was top priority for both the board and yeah, the yeah. university. Um, and what we largely think we're going to be discussing about the initial provision of services is contracting for a program through um, the power to contract for additional police mm -hmm. protection services. Mm -hmm. So for that, I see it very close to the university negotiations ad hoc. Yes. Um, because if we're talking about, do we come into this conversation with money, that's where we do, um, yeah, yeah, putting money towards that. Though I'm not opposed to, um, to assigning um, a separate uh, group to, to work on that as well. Director Grant. Well, and it sounds like from what we were, what Bob was saying is that we wouldn't be the forum for that to happen so much as we'd have a representative there. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. certainly what I'm leaning towards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. So um, is there any direction we want to give with this to uh, inquire to the process or should no, we, uh, we just all just on. stay aware of yeah. what's going on? Let's do that. Cool. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to open that can. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's a good discussion. <laughs> uh, any public comment? Darcel? Uh, yeah, I'm, I kind of more envision the CSD kind of being the, a, a third party at the table to, um, you know, our whole campaign for the CSD was about no more about us without us. So it would be Isla Vista at the table, but also um, since they don't have any resources to put into it, mm -hmm. they can just be there and try to help university and county come to a conclusion together. Um, because I know sometimes negotiations can be hard, especially when they're not George in the table. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jeremy and then Deanna. I would add to that. I think the discussion I'm hearing at the table is is good. That you know, the, there's realities of the power and, and money behind it and all of that. But I think it's important. Maybe it would be so. Based on your clarification, I understand. So the standing committees would would be would require public notice. The ad hoc would not. So the ad hoc, the idea of ad hoc to me sounds like well, that's then excluding the public where the standing committee meetings would include the public. So I would um, suggest from from my perspective, perhaps only, um, but given what Darcel is saying, there is, there is a lot of desire on the part of the community members to be involved in these discussions. So to have an open forum um, to get feedback that you could then take to you know, the university or take to the county, I think that would be Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Deanna and then Supervisor Hartman. That was mainly going to be a point that I made because Jeremy said, you know, it, it, an opportunity for the people of Isla Vista to be represented in places where a lot of those meetings aren't open meetings and aren't accessible to members mm -hmm. of the community. Mm -hmm. Around public safety, that's been a major contention mm -hmm. within Isla Vista about who's actually able to, to show up at those meetings. So I think that opportunity would be important. Thank you. The issue of safety in Isla Vista is a broad one, and I really appreciated the forum that you had, and that sort of brought it home how many different aspects there are to it, how many different things are involved in it. Uh, I think some of these negotiations really come under an MOU, and I think I'm going to argue that the CSD be involved. But I'm not sure that all negotiations should be in public. But I think the CSD has a very critical role to aggregate, you know, to have forums to hear, to allow all of us to hear, 
uh, and to try to synthesize and distill that and then bring that forward. So I, I felt compelled to speak up and say we aren't going to have public meetings in this negotiation mm -hmm. for every step of the way. But, but the CSD, even if you don't have money to put to this, you have a very significant role in speaking for the community, being elected representatives to carry forward. Uh, and they've got a lot of responsibility to make sure you, you know, hold those, hurt those interests. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm just going to agree with all the other speakers and say I think there's a value in a public safety commission committee that's a forum for discussing public safety issues and mm -hmm. recommending to the board what it should be focusing on or mm -hmm. heading up the county and telling them what they should focus on. But I think the public safety aspect extends far beyond whatever negotiation needs to happen here. Yeah. So, like the public safety town hall is a great example. Yeah. So, a constant thing. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Darcel and I have had a lot of experience with ad hoc committees. Um, and <laughs> what we can tell you <laughs> is this uh, that, that ad hoc committees can't be permanent. The case law says about six months. It's so so you have a limited period of time, and then if you're going to have it ongoing, it, it would have to convert and, and then be subject to all the formalities of Brown. Thank you. And the director Brown. I was just going to say that I, I appreciate the comments from everyone about wanting there to be community input into uh, how we're designing our public safety programs, and I really think that something like the event that we had um, earlier in uh, or actually at the end of last month um, regarding public safety and uh, trying to help us gauge what our priorities should be for the uh, the way that we design uh, programs that are public safety related at the university that the university is going to help fund with their grant I think that we can kind of apply that same model in the future going forward to uh, to help the county and the university be able to uh, do outreach regarding uh, or outreach and accept input for what people want to see in a public safety agreement and MOU, uh, whatever it is, uh, in the future. So that's something that I'll be thinking about uh, going forward as well. Excellent. Any other board discussion? No more? Okay. Perfect. Uh, now moving on to. Uh, 4.4.1, because we listed 4.4 twice, um, authorization <laughs> of funding requests. Um, consider taking action to authorize the board president to request $3,000 from the office of the third district county supervisor to be transferred to the district. Um, I put this on here because we owe the third district a letter um, by the end of the week, but ideally by tomorrow morning. So um, if uh, I can have this I'll authorization. I'll authorize the uh, board president to request $3,000 from the Office of the 3rd District County Supervisor. Okay. I'll, s I'll second. Okay, and again, that's to authorize the board president to request $3,000 from the Office of the 3rd District County Supervisor. Um, Sheena. You guys are, are officially um, set up for the county auditor controller. So we, we we've close. We can, we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can don't worry, we can move the money. <laughs> so, so we've sent in the agreement. Yeah. Now, the, for the treasury, that's what we need to be focused on, right? The account there. Well, we have the treasury, but we need to do the accounting. They finally got the agreement through county council. Well, not quite through county council. It does need that our the agreement for the accounting services needs to go to the Board of Supervisors. But I believe if you request from Supervisor Hartman yeah. the funding, their staff contact that would move the money is in the CEO's office. You're authorized by the agenda to, I'm authorized to initiate transactions. You're authorized to approve the transaction. So I think if I move that transaction, we'll be okay to move that cash prior to the end of the year. Right. And you said that, I've heard you say in the past, or I think I have, that uh, we have a bank account. We do have number, a bank right? account. And I was going to talk to you after the meeting about going to introduce you to the Treasury, get the bank deposit tickets and all that. Fantastic. But this transaction can be a movement between funds. It's a 
it, it, it's a diff, it's a trend. Pardon me. What's that term? It's a it's a it, we can move it between we can move it for a transfer from the county fund to the district fund without drawing a check and making a deposit. It, it's just magic. a yeah, it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We, we need that piece of paper authorizing it. Yeah. Requesting it. We need a piece yeah. of paper to request it to be the backup the documentation. documentation. Yeah. Somebody set up this system that requires a lot uh, of documentation <laughs> and so many checks and balances, and I had to do a full day training. That's awesome. Was it busy? I wonder. I wonder who. Yeah. I wonder who it was. Yeah, my staff did that. <laughs> but, um, blame the staff. Okay, so I made a motion. I don't know if I got yes. a second. Oh, I, I, you got the second. Um, and is there any public comment? Any more board discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, motion passes 7 0. Who is the second? And, uh, and as far as um, details for the, the bank account in that letter, if I say transfer from county fund to district fund, does that suffice or do we want to go more specific? Just because we won't be able to discuss this further than the meeting as far as this letter. Uh, yeah. I don't think what you sent to the office for the district, you have to go into the weeds. Okay, great. <laughs> like, yeah. Just request a, you know, a transfer of funds from the budget of the third district to the community services district. Yeah. Uh, great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And um, uh, added to this, at the start of the new fiscal year, the office of the third district supervisor is um, pledging another two thousand dollars to the CSD. Oh, thank, wow. thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. We don't have a huge discretionary budget cover. That's what we get. Thank you. <laughs> I still have a standing desk made out of cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, all right. Is uh, there any other discussion in this uh, agenda item? No? Okay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You'll have that letter in the morning. Cool. All right, um, now we will go back to 4.2, which we skipped before. Um, consider allocation of board tasks and responsibilities. Uh, we have a lengthy attachment on this, but we can't spend too much time. Um, so, uh, Director Freeman, if you want to introduce this. So something, something horribly confusing has ended up occurring, which is, uh, which I, I'm, I, I don't think I'm going to, I think it's going to be fine, but I'm going to preface it with this idea that I've, attempt, I've attempted, I've apparently constructed an agenda item which based upon the voting of things, it, it will not directly cause me to do anything. There we go. It's just a, I'm asking, it's, it's it recommends a solicitation of a donation, it's not actually directly to do it. So that's okay. All right. Um, I, I requested legal, on my side, for personal legal clarification on my, on aspects of this this letter, and I was given the uh, uh, opinion that a loss is still considered a financial <laughs> a financial connection to something. Um, but um, okay, so I don't think I need to recuse myself from my own agenda item, which is good because otherwise, how the hell am I supposed to introduce this thing? Um, so uh, the, I mean, the really the, the really fast, too long to read of this is that we never actually coordinated what interns are doing, except for to provide high-level direction that Spencer's intern would work for formation committee, Ethan's intern would work for policy committee, my intern would work for community engagement committee, um, and um, we end, we've now ended up in a situation where when we, we talked about things that interns might do, one of which is take minutes, uh, we now have ended up in a situation where the minutes for both um, for formation committee are two months behind, and I just hate doing the ones for policy committee. And so I, I was hoping that we could have a quick conversation about the tasks that we do, things that we would like to actually assign to, or just trade. Like if somebody wants to do minutes, I, I, I'm, there's all sorts of things I'm willing to spend many hours doing, but I, for the five minutes of minutes, it's just really, really burning me. Uh, and so like, what are we, what, what, what do we currently do, what do we don't like doing, and, and how can we fix this? And my, and my like, if no one, if, if, if the only thing that we have is this minute task, I suggested that um, I could donate money towards um, uh, hiring somebody who could just specifically do minutes if we're not having interns do it and, we're, and, and none of, no one on the board is doing it. Um, I specifically suggested, but I guess I'm now retracting, that my company could hire somebody and donate the time for it, um, but I might still be able to donate it, but we can't direct me to do it, and we'll have to figure that out later, but um, yeah. 
Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll just start off. Um, in terms of the policy committee, which I feel like this is mostly focused on, I'll be happy to do the minutes. Um, even though I do think it's the responsibility of the chairperson of the committee, um, I will be happy to do it if that's what's needed. Um, and as far as the formation committee, I mean, all of our committees need to be on top of getting minutes done, but I don't think this is something we have to spend a ton of time on. Um, as far as the policy committee, I'll be happy to do that. Okay, I mean, when, uh, when the policy committee chair was chosen, I will say that I specifically talked about minutes and I was told that it would not have to be me doing minutes. So you might think that it's my responsibility, but I was told that I could at least delegate it to somebody. Okay, I'll be um, happy but, to do but it. But I, I chose to do this right up when I, when I discovered that formation committee was two months behind and I thought that, and maybe I'm wrong, that it seems like we just have a general problem getting minutes done. It would be nice to get minutes done. I also additionally have, um, have pointed out in here, and because it, it is right now, room setup is something that does have to get done, and we just kind of, well, people show up, and hopefully somebody does room setup. But it would be nice to, like, for example, to just I would I would rather just know I'm in charge of it, or know I'm not in charge of it. If you don't want me to be in charge of it, I would ask that somebody else be in charge of it, rather than it be like we show up. Today I show up at four um, four fifty, and no one's here. I go to the park district, and um, they won't give me a key because they just gave a key, and Rodney has left. Which is normally I can just ask Rodney, and Rodney will slip me a second key. And so, um, and so then it's like, okay, well now I'm come back. And so thankfully you you were here when I got back, and I'm like, right. oh, before five o'clock. Yeah, but so it's um, uh, it would be nice to just at the whoever's in like just knows that they're in charge of room setup could also be the person who is in charge of getting the key. That would also reduce confusion with the park district as well as confusion here, um, and. I, again, it doesn't have to be me. I, 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 I said I'd be willing to do it, but if it's not me, I would kind of just prefer it. Can we assign it to somebody? Uh, Director Thurlow and then Director Geis. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe I better get counsel that I can speak about interns. Can I speak about interns? You're not taking any action on the interns, right? No, not yet. Okay. Um, why aren't the interns taking the minutes? I can tell you why. I can tell you why I did not assign my intern to take minutes. Yes. Okay. The reason I assigned, did not assign my intern to take minutes is that the only direction that I had with respect to what my intern was supposed to be doing was that um, he was supposed to work on community engagement, and that Ethan's intern was going to be taking care of policy committee. And so I was waiting for Ethan's intern to work on work on policy committee. Yeah. So why are we why are we discussing it? We're, we're just Ethan, have the interns take the minutes. That's fine. I mean, as our program evolved. Um, this My intern like very wasn't working on policy committee, um, yeah. and maybe that's something we should have brought up here, um, helping out with other just as important tasks. Um, but we have a I discussion mean, on most, interns. The uh, most important thing that we're doing here, yeah. and having interns do it was from the very beginning one of the things we were going to have interns do. Right. So I think that we need to have the interns do the minutes, and we've got three new interns coming on. Two new, one continuing. Yeah. Okay. I, I think my recollection for some of the hesitancy there stemmed from before we had decided to have them file the financial interest forms and that the kind of routine of what we were focusing on having our interns do kind of just got cemented in place for that first quarter. So I, I'm, yeah, I mean, if that's something that is okay with everyone, I'm happy to have whoever is assigned to me take minutes. Um, at committee meetings as well. And you're speaking for the committee that you're on? Like the formation yes, the formation committee, committee of course. Uh, Director Jordan? I think he was oh, sure. yes. Director Geis? Oh, I was just going to say, you know, for the formation committee, uh, Director Thurlow took the minutes for the beginning meetings and Director Brandt's taken the minutes for the succeeding meetings and I never took responsibility as the chair. But I guess one of my goals out of those meetings when I think back of it, if we have a good agenda, which is my responsibility, and you can have agenda items that you get the minutes done at the meeting, it should go better. And that means you might have to take a little bit longer to do your motions and use a computer and finish the meeting, finish the, the minutes as part of the meeting would be a good discipline to turn that around. I, and it, it, it will take a little bit longer and it does take a little bit more discipline, but as I've been thinking about that for our formation committee, that's how I would like to do it. 
Director Primo. At our policy committee, I do actually write down everything, and we do that. It's just I'm just bad at the very end of it, formatting them together into a document. Essentially, if I if I could just if, if I can know that one of the interns, even mine, I don't care. Like right, it's like I just as long as we can assign, we know like if I if I know I'm allowed to do that, or I know I'm supposed to send it to somebody else, it's probably. 20 extra minutes of work that somehow I, I, I know is painful to me and it's just not getting done for information committee. And so that's why I was like, right. uh, yeah. Well, as far as um, the duties, changes for the duties of interns, that's in 4.8. Okay. We can take action there. Um, any, any then motion about stage management? <laughs> about what? About my stage manager idea. Stage Having somebody in charge of room setup. Um, we have well, one on that I just have a comment on room setup. Now that we're going to take over the room, we're going to be responsible for the keys. And Director Brand says, "Hey, we should put some more policy around this. Maybe we can take Jay's consideration there when we start doing this policy about how to run the room and what our what our procedures are going to be. That we can take into consideration room setup. That we do it more efficiently, or how, how we accomplish that." And I don't know which committee is going to handle that. I don't know if that's being referred to formation or to policy. Is it a procedure or is it a policy? I don't know. Policy. But I mean, at the crux of this, Jay, um, I I always, if if you're not the first person here, I am. And if we want to schedule a time to get here together, that's fine. Let me know a time. I'll be here. I'll make sure keys in hand. Okay. 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 And also, one another thing that's nice about having somebody in charge of that, for example, sometimes I'm requested to retrieve a television. I was told one time when I was going to request, when I was going to go my television, that Spencer's intern would be available to do that. Spencer's intern actually, when he finally showed up, told me that he had not been told he was going to be able to do that, and like he was available to do that. So it's just having somebody as a point person in charge of that then gets the, essentially become the stage manager, and then they can start directing people to help, and it bec everything becomes a lot clearer. And again, I don't care if it's me. If you want to do it, that's fine. Uh, it would just be nice if there was somebody who was actually the stage manager for. This production that we have. Director Jordan. And maybe this does fall a little bit further down in the agenda, but this kind of goes back to my original concern with the interns is that as much as we keep saying my intern, they signed up to be interns of the community services district. So when we see a lacking hole, then the interns should be filling that, in my opinion. Like if we're seeing something evidently that's like needed. Um, and I know that everybody spreads super thin, and that's why, like, Jay, if you're feeling really, like, overwhelmed by this, or someone's, like, if this is spreading you too thin, like, let's make sure that that job is assigned instead of, you know, dispersing the workload over multiple people. So let's just, like, I feel like we can consolidate the workload and just identify what we need. And I think that will probably come up more yeah, in item 4.8, but, like. Great. Thank you. Any more discussion in this item? There's public. I think you had some public comment. Public comment. Susan. I was just wondering if it's the public, like myself, could volunteer to set up a room if someone else closed it or something like that. I mean, right, can we partake of this? Um, Just a suggestion. I mean, we've had people who have come early casually help us set up chairs, and that's fine, but I don't think we'll assign a member of the public to, to come in and uh, set up just based on uh, liability and, um, and employment standards. But um, but there's been times that we've had someone show up early and help out, and that's totally appreciated. Uh, any other? Wait, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. The chair of fairy. What's that? The chair of fairy. Okay. Missing it. Um, but okay. <laughs> Director <laughs> Brent. Oh no, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on to 4.5, University Negotiations Ad Hoc Committee um, update and direction. We uh, met on June 7th with um, Executive Vice Chancellor David Marshall and um, Chuck Haynes. Is he still the Director of Capital? No, uh, he is the Interim uh, Assistant Chancellor for Budget. Okay, so uh, we met with those two, um, myself, Director Hedges, and Director Thurlow. Um, it was a good meeting and it was in regard to um, the letter that I sent at the direction of the board uh, for requesting 15% uh, administrative overhead type allocation of the $200,000 grant for um, 2017. And uh, within that we, uh, we discussed office space, that was before we arrived at uh, what's happened now. Um, we also discussed uh, 
counsel. Uh, we discussed uh, liability insurance. Uh, those were the main main items that we discussed. And overall, it was a great discussion. Mm -hmm. And um, the request is still being processed. But I believe moving forward in a positive manner. Um, in that meeting, it was uh, addressed by uh, the university representatives that uh, they most likely could not request university funding for the office space. So that kind of spurred our um, kind of efforts afterwards on the county side. Um, but everything else was uh, was moving forward pretty well. Anything you'd like to add, Director Hedges or Thurlow? And the fact that <clears throat> now the uh, office space has been provided for kind of uh, should be a prime to the pump, mm -hmm. we would hope. Uh, Director Brent? So what was the general feeling about uh, using some of that money for things like Council's fees and liability insurance. Do you want to speak to that? I think there would be, there has always been resistance to paying staff. Okay, so in regards to council. As a, as a general That's right. policy, um, whether it's a general manager or council or just uh, janitorial, there's been re uh, insurance, there's great interest in that. And I think um, as well as continuing to fund interns. Mm -hmm. One of the things it did, I will add, one of the things that I think the next step will be, which is to, is to itemize exactly how you want to spend the overhead. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was getting at now, because it mm -hmm. seems like, because I was, I was sort of expecting you to say legal counsel is a no-go, so we've got uh, what looks like a proposal on the table for liability insurance and if I remember correctly the dollar amount on that was pretty low so well yeah thirty two hundred dollars and fifteen percent of two hundred thousand is what thirty thousand dollars so I think that we're gonna need to it sounds to me to me like you want us to provide you with more direction for what else that money would buy um, is that correct? wasn't really why it was coming, but okay. uh, but that's most certainly welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I will say that my uh, my understanding of uh, how legal counsel fit into uh, this, um, I didn't walk away from either of our meetings with that same uh, okay. interpretation. But okay. I know uh, we're also wearing different hats in the in the meeting. So well, I do want to comment that most of the time I was on your side. Oh, to the we're on the we're later, on the good people side. Commented that I seem to be on your side right. more than I was on their side. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah. well, we're all a good team. I, I thought we broke down the side. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I thought we eliminated yeah. the wall. Yeah, yeah we did. Yes. Yeah. But we also um, made reference to uh, the financial and accounting services as well, which is a pretty small amount. Um, right. That's right. That's 500, yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. And our commitment to council, I wasn't at the meeting, is that in the proposal it was like 2000 for the first year? Was that Up until uh, so the end if of the year. So if we added up on one hand, we got 3200 2500 um, and we haven't put any money aside for office expense. So 5200 5, Let's say our budget so far, you know, we're committed to just get off the ground 7500 we got 3000 from Supervisor Hartman, 2000 the next year from Supervisor Hartman. We got about 1500 in donations so far. So we're getting close to be able to fund those general expenses. Right. My personal opinion is we should make we we need to make more efforts at fundraising for general administrative expenses including trying to not use the money given to us by Supervisor Hartman and make sure we try and turn that money and the university money into direct services. Mm -hmm. The more we can do that, if we can have a budget of 205000 for direct services and do something with that money, we would be much better off. And so I, I, I'm just saying I, hopefully we all get committed to fundraising over the summer to try and get some more administrative money from the people that support this district. So and with that, do you think that it would be a good idea for a formation committee to come forward with a comprehensive list of things 
that we would like to see this specific pot of money going towards, which is this thirty thousand dollar fifteen percent cut. Oh well, I think that needs to be within the university negotiations ad hoc, since we're the ones uh, directly asking for it. You I know, my original thought that thirty thousand was going to be used for rent. We all of a sudden just solved that problem with a nice donation from mm -hmm. the county. Yeah. So then, how do we repurpose some of the thirty thousand, and what would the university let us spend that on? I think we should put forward what we think our general administrative expenses are, the bare necessities, mm -hmm. in in the form of a budget to get it a little bit more solid before we and then request from the university. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like we're saying the same in. thing. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, I think we're saying uh, yeah. because I, what I see is that us talking about what we've already been talking about in formation committee as distinct from us going as formation committee and talking to the university in a negotiating context. May I say that again? I will. So, I mean, you know, the formation committee has already spoken about things such as office space or liability insurance and put forward recommendations. So what would be the issue with the formation committee continuing to make recommendations on some of the things that we would like to see uh, that money go to yeah. in an open and public meeting and then bringing it to the board for approval and if the board approves it then it's something you yeah. can bring to the university. Oh well I, I think that's totally fine but okay. also know that we're working on that on the side of the university. Oh of course cool. and there's no reason for any of us three to be talking about yeah. that stuff outside of a public meeting anyhow so yeah cool. And Directly it would be helpful it's, you know, at some point if we uh, I, I feel like this is in some ways kind of like a guessing game. We put forward something, well, no, that hasn't traditionally been approved. That might be approved. I mean, is there is there some kind of a consensus on what this culture over here uh, ha has when it comes to what might be approved? You know, for, for instance, we can't pay for salaries, we can't pay for this, that, or the other. But, I mean, are there, is, is there a, a list of things that might possibly be approved? No, and I think that's good, but at the end of the day, Probably I not think I think no, I think that the the university's position is going to be one is this has to benefit students, uh -huh. and two is it has to be part of the educational intellectual mission of the university. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. anything that ties back into the intellectual educational mission of the university, such as supporting internships, uh -huh. and um, you know. Fac, uh, you know the safety issue that came up, but but yeah. uh, no, I think it's a blank slate right now. And the uh -huh. more creati creative this body is, the more likely that I I, I have not heard a list from uh -huh. that side. There uh -huh. is no uh -huh. list out there. They really are waiting for this group to do it. The only thing I've heard from the beginning was that um, they're very adamant about not paying staff, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and and essentially that would be. The university funneling cash directly into the CSD, which is a problem, and then the CSD uses that money to pay staff. Uh -huh. That's problematic both philosophically uh -huh. as well as in terms of the university, whenever possible, is going to want to spend the money within the university and then provide the goods and services. Uh -huh. Because I, I have uh, in my mind a list of, uh, of academically rich well, potential, and, and I think, research potentials. I think exactly, and, and I think that yeah. as we go down the road, uh, you know, six months from now, yeah. nine months from now, we should really be thinking about how could we fund faculty yeah. with yeah. grants yeah. to do services yeah. or to provide services or to provide outline. That's the sweet spot. Yeah, there are dissertations waiting to happen here. Exactly. Yeah. But and ongoing discussion for our yeah, committee. Yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll be talking Sorry. a lot. Uh, any other questions for us, Director Freeman? Um, so, one one concern that that um, arguably is a, it's a concern that's been going on since the beginning of people talking about AB three at a high level um, is uh, um, the possibility of funds getting moved around or being removed once you have um, a, a new government or service in place. Uh, and then a much more specific one has come up since this, the, our negotiations have begin, uh, begun. So in the original description that was provided, um, and so what I mostly have to be able to work on is that the meeting summary that you gave at the special meeting, 
where there were the two powers, um, or the, so the two it's possible services that were brought up, one of which was um, National Police Protection Services for a sexual assault detective, and the other one of which um, being for the tenant landlord mediation um, service, um, possibly community housing office, et cetera, um, is I've heard um, now through multiple channels that essentially UCSB, um, one of the things that they're thinking of doing is just dismantling the existing program that they have through community housing office, and which actually aligns with the wording that was provided here of one possible option could coincide, sorry, could include the consideration of UCSB and the IDCSD contracting with the RHMP to be the primary mediation provider in Isla Vista. Um, and so um, from a negotiation perspective, um, I would like to ask the people who are our two negotiators at the university um, to, tr I would hate to see it essentially that our money ends up being just a budget transfer from community housing to the grant provided to the IVCSD, um, where, uh, which it, it, is, it, is the, it is the case that the community gets some benefit out of that because now we have the ability to um, provide that service to non-students, mm -hmm. but if the majority of that service that was being provided was to students, um, then the majority of the money that we end up spending on it, again, might just end up being like essentially like a balance transfer um, that um, allows the, uh, the the university to not spend as much money on mm -hmm. one thing in order to use up some of the money that they claim to have allocated towards us here. Mm -hmm. So, definitely some conscientious of that. Yeah, thank you. Heard. Any public comment? All right. Uh, is it okay if we move on? Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Now, a 4.7 liability insurance. Uh, so what we have today is uh, continuing to consider um, the comprehensive general liability insurance uh, from Golden State Risk Management Authority. In our packet, we have um, the same uh, brief overview as provided last time. But in addition, uh, we have in front of us a copy of the bylaws for Golden State Risk Management Authority, as well as um, the, uh, the service agreement, um, sorry, joint exercise of power agreement. So is there a signature place on that joint exercise of power agreement? I don't think so. Is there, yeah, that's no. just the agreement and it has about 100 people listed on it. it, it from what it part. says, there are amendments to the agreement right. and it says under signatories, the necessary signatures for amendments to this agreement are set forth in each amended agreement. So were we to enter into the agreement we would get our own copy that is the amended agreement because this is the actual JPA. Okay. Yeah. But so we'll so over the it. phone in my brief discussion with Walter Michael, which is Walter Michael, the two bands, he said that all we had to do is, you know, look at the bylaws and enter into the agreement that approved the bylaws. So that's all because it's a JPA. And everybody agrees to these same bylaws. You're just entering into the agreement to agree with the bylaws, and so there is no separate agreement for us. And they're not going to negotiate any, any separate terms and conditions with us because we're in this big risk management pool along with everybody else. I believe that's the way it works. That's the way a joint powers authority works. That's correct. You you exercise a power that all participants in the authority share. And do you so think you we sign something, Ross, or it, and should we delegate to Ethan to sign it? Or? I, th I think what you should probably do is to direct me to look at their, their bylaws and their whatever agreement or, or paper that they need executed in order to become uh, a member. I'll look at it and then I can provide direction back to, uh, to the board president on what needs to be done. Or to you, whoever, whoever the board does. Can we make that into a motion? Yeah. Okay, so um, motion by Jordan and second. Is that, well, do you want to yeah. phrase it? Um, maybe I can use some help with the wording, but um, so what is the request to for refer the bylaws. Motion to direct general the district yeah. council. Motion to direct district council <laughs> to review the to review the legal requirements necessary to become part of the Golden State uh, Risk Management Authority and provide direction to the board president or his or her designate to sign to execute whatever agreement may be necessary. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you click on the minutes? Oh, yes. So I can see it. Sorry. Absolutely. I, I kind of got stuck there. Uh -oh. 
You're you exercising too much. <laughs> if you'd stop exercising, don't get cramped. <laughs> So I would like to make a motion to, <laughs> to direct district council to review the legal requirements necessary to become a part of the Golden State Risk, Risk Management. Management Authority and to advise the board president or his designee for the board president to have the to advise the board president or his designee and for the board president to have the authority to execute any such agreement or legal document. Second. That sounds lovely. Perfect. Just a friendly amendment. Could we make this effective July 1st or June 30th? Sure. Well. And is that for something to be included in the, the language here? I, I don't know if or we need to include it in the language of the motion, but I, let me just make a couple of comments. Number right. one, in this whole series of looking at insurance, it has started with the county's risk manager who said to me, well, you're going to have to get general liability insurance. It's going to cost you about $3,000. And then it went over and they referred us to Skirma. They said they didn't offer that kind of insurance, which they referred me to Alliant. Alliant goes, oh, I'm surprised Skirma doesn't, didn't offer it to you. Here, I'll send you to their competitor. They sent me to the competitor. The competitor jumped on it, said we'd be happy to go to our under, underwriters and see if they would insure you. Boom, they came back with this pretty simple proposal. $50 million coverage is a lot, seemed to give us a straight shot about what we would be covered on. It seems to be fairly straightforward to me. And so I, I think it's a good deal. And the one thing that he said we might hesitate on is this is a requirement of $3,200 a year for three years, mm -hmm. and then it would change. And the only reason it would change would depend on your experience during that period of time. But I, I think that we should go forward with this and I just looked at Ross and say in your experience do you think it's 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 good coverage and we're doing yes. the right thing. Okay. Yes. This is this, <laughs> this is very good coverage. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. So time is of the essence. Yeah. So can we do it by do you think we could get it executed? And and then just thinking about the budget, we'll need to adopt a budget item for this and pay the thirty two hundred and it seems like we have enough cash flow to be able to do that, just in terms of Supervisor would, Hartman's contribution. I, I would like to see the university. Maybe that's maybe I'm out of line, but I'd like to see this come out of the university. That would be. I think I agree with you that Hartman's money should be the money that is last use and has no restrictions, mm -hmm. unrestricted money yeah. that we're going to use because nobody else will fund it. Right, that has some like kind a of big party, <laughs> 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 like a big fundraising party to get more money. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the direct allocation that's going to be something that the, your budget ad hoc committee is going to decide. Yeah. They're the ones in charge of the right. different yeah. categories and what's going to fill what pot. So, I would reserve that policy decision to that ad hoc right. committee. In terms of your question about an, a, an effective date, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing what your I'm missing the thrust at that point. The, the thrust was based on Supervisor Hartman to get this lease executed. They want it, want us to That's have right. insurance in place. I don't right. care if it's executed today and it's in, we're insured today, sure. as soon as possible. But before we execute that agreement, we're going to have to be able to sign off on that lease agreement right. that we have insurance. As long as the right. board president has the authority to execute and bind the district to this three-year commitment of thirty-two hundred dollars, which is what I understand mm -hmm. the motion to be, right? Agreed. Then mm -hmm. we'll we'll do it as soon as Great. I have an opportunity to get everything and okay. we'll okay. put it on the on the we'll put it on the PDQ list. We'll get it done. Pretty done. Did you did you send Ross that email so he knows who the contact is? No, we've just had uh, right, we these two attachments. Yes. So, cool. Cool. Um, all right. Any other board comment on this motion, Jay? Yeah, I, I just I just want to underscore what Bob said about keeping the supervisor's money um, until last and trying to and, and agree with George to try to get this out of the university. One of, one of the things that we're going to run into, which I will continually remind, is that in less than two years we have to have tens of thousands of dollars in order to pay for the minimum board election of 
three of our board members, and so and and I can't imagine that the that the university money can go anywhere near that, and it's going to be difficult to get a nonprofit to fund some of those things, and so it's like we have to have some unrestricted funds available in order to just make this district work. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, any public oh, comment? There's a donation. Jeremy? No, there's no <laughs> <laughs> Not to me. He raised a hand when you said tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> 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 this is not an option. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just curious, actually. I understand. I'm, I, I understand um, the necessity of this and it being very timely, and and I and I'm you know I'm professional. I interact with clients every day. I'm a uh, therapist, and so I have my own professional liability. That 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 really surprised me, and this is what I'm just curious about: is that it's for 50 million? Like that seems like a huge amount of money. Like mine is three million um, for a year, and one million. Um, Three times it could be potentially like so fifty million. I'm just think and three thousand two hundred dollars if the university wants to back that that's like a drop in the bucket for them. But I was just curious, like, is that what the kind of going amount is or when you aggregate that's a good question. And when you aggregate the areas of coverage that are, are enumerated here, you know, first dollar coverage, bodily injury and property damage is a two million dollar policy by itself. Uh, uh, pollution liability that can be so it's, uh, that can be uh, the limit uh, yeah. when it comes to the, you know those types of issues. Uh, automobile liability is same thing. You're looking at two million dollars there. You aggregate these these areas together, and fifty million dollars is a good is a good a good limit. Important. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Director Freeman. Yeah, our our powers are such that we contract for somebody who ends up getting like somebody gets shot or like we uh, we we build a building that falls down. <laughs> oh, you're good. Got it. Um, all right. Uh, so, any more comments before we vote on this, Jonathan? Uh, yes. yes, correct. Made by Jordan, seconded by Frank. All right. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, so ordered. Thank you for your help. All right. Um, all right. Now on for the summer internship program, um, I have an update for everyone. Let me let just me, get uh, my notes. Let me excuse myself. Okay, then you know what? We'll we'll do this last. No, time. that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, you don't have to figure out a word. Yes. There's only one more item. Yeah, because we only have one other item, and I need you here for that one. Well, I just don't want to stand outside for 40 minutes while people. Well, Which is why I'm saying we take it out of order so that okay. you can just go right. after this. Okay. Um, Good. So we're on the last one now, which was put as 4.6. We need to get better at numbering these. <laughs> um, yeah. Consider changing rule, changing regular meeting days and start times for meetings with the board of directors. Um, this was brought about after a, a few of us have thought like we've been meeting at this time and it's worked. But then also uh, now that we've brought on um, general counsel, uh, we want to consider uh, his schedule as well. Um, especially since your commute is a lot longer than ours. Uh, <laughs> so um, one thing that before we even get to which days may work if we do want to change, um, I'm definitely an advocate of starting earlier if possible. 4 p.m. I think would be a better start time. And um, even though we've been good about not going nearly as late as we started, um, I still think the earlier we do it um, means the earlier that we can get out and <coughs> within that many of us are working during the day so um, the later we're going it's uh, a little harder to do um, so if we do have um, a little bit of an earlier start time say 4 p.m. Um, mm. I would definitely appreciate it if it works for people uh, here first let's hear from Ross and then we'll uh, take board uh, comments first I'll give you an experiential comment that <coughs> when elected bodies or appointed bodies like clan commissions or uh, our standing committees are looking at changing their time. The first thing I always say to them is, is that going to inconvenience your your audience? Is that going to inconvenience uh, the people who are trying to attend? So I would su I would submit that for the board's uh, consideration. In terms of, of my availability, uh, I have a, a other client meetings typically on these two Tuesdays, the ones with this board is currently meeting, uh, and I also have one on the second Monday of every month. Uh, so other than that, I have availability. Uh, 
the first and third uh, Tuesday. If you want to keep it on Tuesdays or if you want to move it to Wednesdays, we could do that. At, or, I'm sorry, second and fourth. Second and fourth, yeah. Second and fourth. Perfect. Uh, you know, if you wanted, if we're looking at Wednesdays, or if you want to keep it on Tuesdays, uh, that's fine. But I lucked out that my all of my items for uh, another client um, were continued uh, tonight, so I didn't have to try and be in two places at once. So, just another thing to ask Ross a question: I wasn't here when we formed the agreement. Did we set an expectation that he would be here every meeting? and have to travel to every, I mean it, it's a pleasure to have you at the meeting because you gave us you great advice to today okay, I <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just don't know if you to, two meetings a month is what we're bargaining for well what what I committed to uh, was to probably show up every meeting uh, okay. in the beginning okay. just so cool. you all know who I am I get to know who That's you great. are and I figure out the best way to provide the services that you're you're paying me, my firm. Set it up. I got it. And then we'll go from there. Good. And yeah. as far as um, so y you've offered uh, these dates that may work better. As far as time, would an earlier start time be? I helpful? I leave before the traffic gets bad in Southern California. Uh, you know. Yeah. I but driving home. I going home. It, it doesn't matter if it ends up being late. I can make arrangements. I know people locally or. Can get a hotel that's cheap. It's fine. Um, you know that's part of the commitment that I've I've made to the district. So don't worry about that. I would say when you're picking a start time, consider you know, your your community members, and then if it ends up going late, it goes late. Don't don't worry about me there. Uh, Director Freeman. Okay. So give, given given that, I want to provide some context for the times that other community service districts in Santa Barbara County begin. Casmalia is 5 p.m. San Inez is 5.30 p.m. Vandenberg, Santa Rita Hills, Mission Hills, and Cuyama are all 7 p.m. And Los Alamos is 7.30 p.m. There is a reason why these districts tend to have meetings that begin in the evening. It is so that people who work during the day can attend the meeting. Um, I definitely do not believe that we should be starting them. I mean, unless, I mean I, I'm totally open, like if, if we can only get Trindle here at a particular time, then I would do it. But, um, but given that that does not seem to be the constraint, I do not think that we should have a meeting that starts as early as four. And I don't even think we should really have a meeting starts as early as five. I actually think that the, the, this, the 530 or six time period is the thing that I mean. It's like the weighted average of these is looking more towards six or even later, so. Well, uh, it, if it, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, director had his first. Uh, let alone the community, I have a meeting um, for my employer from 3.30 to 5 o'clock every Tuesday. So, I mean, I can get here after that as quickly as possible, but um, that would be difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I sure. thought God was your employer. No, <laughs> actually the county of Santa Barbara is my employer. <laughs> uh, Director well, I was just going to say, uh, in light of the fact that it looks like the second and the fourth Tuesdays would work for council, I would move that we change the regular meeting date and or the regular meeting schedule to the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month to begin at 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, and do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Seconded by Geis. Um, and so, uh, motion to change the regular motion to change the regular meeting date and time to be the second and fourth Tuesdays. She wasn't going to say anything, but she was sitting over there fuming. I'm moral support. But anyway, so the motion we have is to change the regular meeting date and time to the second to be the second and fourth Tuesdays of every month at 6 p.m. Uh, effective when? Well, it's effective as soon as we pass the motion. Yeah. Oh, wait, so that well, means we gotta I mean be here next week? Yes, no? So next week? And then, yeah. or do we skip so that a means week? We That's week? It means week. there'd be a, me a meeting week. scheduled for next Tuesday. Because I'm getting confused really. Yeah, can't we, Tuesday's the 4th of July, isn't it? Yeah, can't we yeah. also make No, next Tuesday is the 27th oh, next of June. Oh, the 4th. We're and skipping we around the 4th of July. We could always delay a motion, can't we? Can't we say that, like, to go into effect on such and such type date? We could, yeah. yeah. I mean, do we want... It sounds like we're going to need to have a meeting regardless of right. what I've heard from the chair. Well, I am. I will not be here next Tuesday. Okay. Um, I was hoping I'd be here next Tuesday. Okay. Mine's because I'll well, be wait, on district business in Tuesday? Sacramento, but... Next um, Tuesday. The, the 27th. 
So it sounds like we may not have a quorum because I won't be here next Tuesday. Okay. 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 So so yeah. we can also cancel the meeting or delay the. Well, we well how about to be effective July first? Well, how about to be effective August first, and that way because we've already kind of wrestled with July fourth, right? Didn't we move our meeting to the second? I'm pretty sure that Wait, we haven't done anything with that. Time. So that would be the first one. Well, week. maybe that. Okay. Right? July 4th is the first Tuesday. So then it's now the second. Is it? Yeah. Wait, wait. All right, July 1st is, is fine. Okay, so. I'm confused now. Never mind. July 2nd or 4th on July. So effective July 1st. Um, so then in July, it would be 11th and 25th? Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Any other board comments on it? I just was going to ask Director Brandt. I think that'll force us to change the formation committee. It agenda. is. I think it's going to probably affect all the committee's operations. Yeah. All right. So just, right. cool. mm -hmm. just in advance, so since we're switching it to the second, that day I have to do a walkthrough with my landlord, like starting at 5 p.m. to move into my house with her to check for damages, just so you all know. So I'm going to try and wrap it up as quickly so as possible. So on what day? On the second. We won't We're not changing that. We're second. not meeting the second? No. Second Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. I thought you were saying the second. I was like, <laughs> no. I can't do that. Nope. All good. Um, any more public comment? All right. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> any abstentions? Uh, so ordered. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, emphasis on 7. Director uh, Grant will send out a new schedule for us with all timers. Yes. <laughs> will you do that? No, oh, yeah, right. on the on the window. Yeah, I'll, I'll send one out too. I'll, I'll send okay, it. Okay, so uh, we're now going to go into internship okay. program. So before, I just want to, um, as a uh, information item, let you know that the uh, Santa Barbara City College Foundation has agreed to fund an internship an intern this summer mm -hmm. and you all need to reach out I got the money you got you have to coordinate get them going and it's uh, Jeff Green Jeff Green will be the yeah. contact yeah. thank you uh -huh. good work have a good day George yes two bite wait but in future meetings in the jet items do we need to schedule a special meeting or is that not necessary uh, we will it's just a summer internship. It doesn't specify. Oh, no, but for future agenda items. Oh. Um, Wait, should we yeah. wait one second? Should yeah, George, one? if we could actually get your availability for a special meeting um, before the end of the month. If what was the date? What date were you thinking? Um, I'm, out, uh, I'm out from the 28th to the... So Monday or Tuesday of that week. So I can do the, I can do the Monday. So here. What's the dates? Uh, Twenty six. Um, and what that will require is uh, for the budget ad hoc committee to meet before then to come in with a recommended budget. Okay, and we can bring that accounting agreement back to. Because I don't think we ever approved the accounting agreement. Then they made revisions for it to be oh. effective. So well, if they made revisions, did they make revisions after the sixth of June? I think. Okay, because we just sent one to them, signed by myself and Director Brandt. Oh, you did? But, um, but we'll figure that out. Um, okay. However, uh, our ad hoc committee will meet this week and come okay. back at that time. So, so the 26th. Thank right. you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, it's just send me a copy of that. Let me see if it's adequate. Yeah. Okay. So is the meeting going to be Monday the 26th? Yes. Time? Uh, 6 p.m.? Um, if I can't ask this now, to tell me, um, and we won't talk about it. Um, there's a policy committee meeting currently scheduled. Is that we'll move it? We, yeah, but so we just cancel it. Yes, okay. but we should figure out when we'll make it up because we do need to to probably reschedule it rather than just waiting to the cancel next meeting. Special meeting for rescheduling. Like canceled regular, make special. Yeah, order yeah. Right. But um, definitely, we we have to get this budget approved. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, not, yeah. not complaining. Oh no, I'm just yeah. Just like I'm just like, what should I do about it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll uh, we'll finalize that once we get to number five. Um, but as far as uh, the summer intern program, we have two new interns joining us. Um, both are going into their fourth year. Um, one is named Alicia Carducci. Uh, she has experience um, 
working as an intern at Planned Parenthood of Santa Barbara Public Affairs, um, also at the city of Simi Valley, um, and she's a poli-sci and feminist studies major. Um, and then we also have Penelope Ferguson. Um, she's interned for uh, Congresswoman Capps and Senator Feinstein, um, as well as the Department of Justice in the voting section of the Civil Rights Division, and she's a um, she's also been employed as a research assistant with the History Department on campus, and she is a poli-sci and history of public policy double major. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we've gotten um, top applicants to the program, um, and as mentioned before, Stephen will be continuing on. So uh, we're going to meet for an orientation next week. Um, one of the interns was available to start uh, yesterday, but um, the other wasn't available until next week, so we're going to do orientation together and wait a week. Um, and that was actually the intention we had to have one week break between um, commencement and uh, starting the program. So we'll uh, meet at that time and um, with that, similar to what we did last time, I think I'll weigh uh, the interests of the two students and, uh, and also um, the experiences and what they hope to get out of this and uh, pick accordingly what their assignment, well rather who the director that they're working with is. Um, and as far as uh, in this item, I'd like to, for us to consider any changes to the duties of interns, which I think we need to bring up based on the discussion we had earlier. Um, and if there's any changes in the directors who uh, are working in coordination with interns. <laughs> Perhaps since that's probably the simpler one, let's start on that first. Um, is that, are there any directors who are currently working with an intern who do not wish to, or who are unable to, for uh, this next session? Okay. Are there any in, uh, directors who are not working with an intern right now who would like to work with an intern over this next uh, session this summer? No? I'm gone for a couple of weeks Got in it. July, so I, that wouldn't be fair. So. For sure. And then in September, I'm gone a couple of weeks too. So. Cool. Um, I, I'd love to, I see it, I'd love to work with an intern. Right. I just, don't know if I can like give 100% of my time to making sure that that intern has program set up. So I would rather be realistic. Yeah. So, so I, I, I could use help though. Right, right. You know? uh, Director Freeman. So then, is it possible, for instance, to like, if I have an intern that Natalie is able to also talk and work with my intern? Like, is that something that we That'd can figure out awesome. what we're doing with it's just two of us instead of the three of us and the, the complexities that have occurred before? And I, yeah, I think we I just heard Natalie say she's working 57 hours a week, so. <laughs> well, no, but the point is, is that she's like, she's like, like a hard time right now. Yeah, but that's, that's the, yeah, the idea there is, is that, yeah. is that therefore she wouldn't have to take on any, like, if, if the intern wants anything, the intern contacts me, yeah. but if mm -hmm. Natalie wants something, she can contact the intern and get something done. And that's so the dream, like, Jay. Yeah, that's dream. the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Russ, I'll tell you what our initial concern here was. Um, we felt that it would be improper for, and even though, the, the interns aren't our employees. A employee type person receiving direct direction from multiple members of the legislative body. We saw that as problematic. But you're carrying, you're having them carry out administrative tasks. Yeah. That's the key. You're, 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 they're carrying out administrative tasks, mm -hmm. and they're not going to be communicating. Director Freeman says he's going to vote this way on this thing that's coming right. before us. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, now I'm going to go over here to Director Jordan. Uh, Director Jordan, guess which way Director Freeman's going to be voting on this thing? That's that's what the that's what the, the Brown Act is designed to, to prevent. So if your interns are doing administrative stuff, yeah, they're going to have to interact with, with you, right. all of you, at some point or another. And right. uh, to, get, to get this thing moving, you're going to have to get these interns into these positions to be able to help you carry out these administrative tasks. Totally. And our initial concern wasn't with the Brown Act, but rather um, government code saying that all the general manager is responsible for all employees. and. In, in the absence of that, we were a little nervous with how to proceed, but I'm glad to hear that. Well, you got insurance, or you're going to have insurance, so there's that. At some point, you're, you're going to get credit for doing your absolute best, but that's going to come up against the practical reality of you, you have, you're going to have to do some things, and I will, I will guide you through the legal wickets as best as I can. Uh, you know, and I'm telling you, if you use your interns, use them in administrative capacity, you're going to be fine. Cool. 
Thank you. Uh, Director Freeman? So now that we have this exciting ability to ask like legal questions, can we maybe, because one of the concerns that Natalie brought up before, which I totally agree with, is that by trying to assign interns underneath people, they end up in situations where they aren't really necessarily even working for the district in some, in some feeling at end. Um, so one, one, of the, one of the thought processes initially was even constructing a committee to, um, to try to um, uh, talk about what interns could be working on and doing. And then the issue there is, well, does the committee become a general manager and, and the law specifically states that the board members cannot be a general manager? Um, so is that something that we can again go back and consider again, is to have a committee of that, or is that something that... So you're, you're looking at overseeing what, what the interns do to provide for their educational enrichment? Right, they're not getting paid. They're not. They are getting paid. They are getting paid, but not by the district. Yeah. Right. They're getting paid by the university. So the university is absent some agreement that I have not seen, and maybe there is. There is an right. agreement. Yes, I can provide <laughs> it to you. <laughs> uh, it's not. <laughs> You're going yeah. in the right direction, though. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're not. They're not our employees. They're temporary employees. They're only here for ten weeks. Some of them are continuing, but it, we don't have this. What I would say is this. I, I, I would suggest that you delegate the authority to oversee the interns to one person. Let that person delegate that per, the, the interns out. Don't worry about the whole general manager thing at this point, because honestly, I don't have enough information to make that call. Let me look at what the MOU says for the interns, and let me make that determination. And if I see something in there that changes my mind that says somebody's going to get in trouble, I will come to the board and I will let you know uh, at whenever it happens. Only one page. Okay. Cool. And one one thing I'll say is, um, I uh, I mean I I have been even though it's it's not without its faults, I have been happy with um, the one on one type working relationship. Um, if we were to look to do something different, I um, could not be the, a person responsible for, for three interns at this time. Um, and, and it's not to say that that's a, 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 not, not, not a good way to move forward, um, but if we're looking uh, to me to do that, that's not something I can take on at this time. It seemed like we had a great experience with the last three. Yeah. Don't break yeah, it yet. I agree. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm all for keeping yeah. it going. Yeah. yeah. What about Susan? Uh, Susan. Um, you know, I, I had a couple of interns prior to the political science interns, and um, during one of the projects that took place in Isla Vista, um, I just said, okay, so I'm paying this intern, or my staff, or my, my intern, um, and I said, you know, we're doing a survey in Isla Vista, just go and meet this person, do whatever it is they need your help with, you know, I picked up the phone, would you like help? And they said yes, and so I said, okay, go meet this person, you know, in front of, front of um, whatever corner, and and help them, you know, and, and at their direction, like do whatever it is they need to do, you know. And, and then I record the hours and it goes away. So it seems to me it's almost the same thing with the, the CSD interns, is like, you know, I hire them, um, I track their hours, I pay them, and it's the same thing. Go to the CSD, and they're going to give you direction and your tasks, and, you know, this is in whatever your direction is. Um, I'm also happy to um, coordinate them, too. Like, if they're not needed or something like that, um, not that I would use them because it would be on, on the time that was funded for the CSD, but that at least I could say, you know what, the whole CSD is on vacation this week, and I don't think that, you know, there's going to be any tasks assigned or something like that, just as a communicator for them to understand, you know, sort of what they're, what they're doing, uh, you know, it, it, assisting in that way. It's just the thought if you want me to help coordinate, you know, uh, assigning them to the CSD. Certainly. Well, thank you. And that's something um, I think in this next cohort, um, I should stay more in touch with you about, like, check in about what what's going on in the in the weeks that 
take place between the start and the finish because this last time um, we've mostly spoken about initiating the program and then uh, hiring in the new ones. So I'll definitely stay in, in touch this time around about um, more of the day-to-day -day what's going on. But I do think that one thing, um, well, I think we should definitely keep the one-on-one -on -one type um, work set up. I do think that you've brought up a great point of we can share kind of share the, the resources a little bit better, especially if it is for administrative. Um, administratively. Yeah. Um, but I do think that it, it'll probably be most manageable for the summer if, if we do keep the one intern uh, reporting to one director okay. and the director perhaps being more cognizant of the overall okay. workload more than just uh, specific focus tasks. Okay. I but like the system we had. I think cool. that it's going well. All right. Um, can I just say, Alicia is fantastic, and she is coming to you guys housebroken, and so she will be a great intern for you, I must say so myself. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Director Fina? So I guess just to, uh, uh, I'm not, dress might be the wrong word, but to look at some of the things that was I brought up earlier. Uh, so before we had had some vague direction as far as the purpose of the interns, are we just now saying that, okay, well the interns have administrative functions to help the district and anytime we see something that can be valuable to do it, we assign them to it. Um, I, I'm perfectly happy doing that. In fact, that would solve all the problems aforementioned. Uh, it probably creates one possible new one, which is that I always felt this weird like, one third of the staffing of the district is like somehow I'm unilaterally in control of it. So I better make good use of it. And then I'm like, well, is this a good use of it? I don't know if that's a good use of it. And um, and, uh, and then probably I ended up actually even more poorly optimizing the usage once because I kept thinking about that. <laughs> but uh, but regardless of that comment, like, are we just kind of like more unlocking it? Meaning leaving it open ended to yeah open ended so like for example I'm not I like if, if I think that that's something to be done for policy committee such as spending 20 minutes formatting a minutes document I just assign them to do it I don't feel like well I'm pretty sure Ethan's intern supposed to do that so I won't assign my intern to do that yeah well this time going around I think um, since you are since one of your biggest functions as a member of of this body is chairing the policy committee um, your your intern should be responsible for for any assistance you need there I, I think I should. Uh, give give that up from mine just because uh, you are steering that ship. So I think for for you to be able to get help on that is probably important. Um, but I don't know. It probably is only like twenty minutes every now and then. So yeah. Um, and like what my intern ended up helping with the most in uh, in this first um, cohort wasn't policy stuff, but um, more communications, like uh, and making presentations. Um, which was incredibly helpful, and um, my intern drafted uh, our support for Assembly Bill 722. She uh, drafted multiple letters to the county, drafted um, our presentation at the Public Safety Town Hall. Um, so all of that was really cool stuff, and it was different from what we uh, set out to, uh, to direct, but um, it ended up playing a really important part. And I anticipate that this will evolve too um, in the summer cohort. Um, the interns probably won't end up doing exactly how we uh, envisioned it at this meeting, but leaving it open-ended and making sure that we're communicating more at these board meetings will probably be important. Jay. Okay. So then, um, uh, with the extent to which you're trying to get Natalie support for things, um, is that something where um, Natalie should say something directly to an intern, not say something to me in order to talk to an intern, or is that something that would that um, confusing because if Natalie says something direct to the intern and I'm saying something direct to the intern where he doesn't know how to allocate time or like how should we coordinate? Perhaps we have a standing agenda item. Yeah. That would be great. That's a cool. great idea. I'm excited by this. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we, okay. Yeah. Okay. We can even yeah. put that right at the end by number five. Yep. Oh, that, All that's, right. That, I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you so Glad much. Glad to hear. Um, okay. Thanks, Jay. Any more discussion on this one? No, I feel good. Thank you. Cool. Thank you all so much. Any public comment? Cool. This is a lot easier than our first intern discussion, so <laughs> we're doing good. Uh, all right, uh, so that concludes um, all of our uh, discussion and action items. Uh, and as far as future meeting date, we have uh, the 27th for a special meeting. Um, and as far as the content of that meeting, it'll be uh, receiving and hopefully approving uh, recommendations from the budget 
ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. Um, if anything else super pressing comes up, it'll be on that agenda too, meaning anything that needs to take place before the end of the month. Say if there's a, we figure out there's something uh, with the office space that needs to come back to the board for last approval, that'll end up there. Mm -hmm. If uh, Ross looks through uh, the JPA and finds something that, that maybe is questionable, that'll come back. But we're not going to discuss anything other than uh, immediate needs before the end of the month at that, at that one. Um, and then after that, we'll uh, meet the second Tuesday of July. Awesome. Um, okay. And are there any um, agenda items that people want to bring up at this time for that meeting, or would you for like the to be? July second meeting. Yeah. Sec second uh, Se Tuesday, yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So that you can be there. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. July eleventh. I swear, I'm yeah. just gonna be sitting here by myself on the I'm second. You a That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, all right, if no one has anything right now, I'll submit <laughs> it to the secretary. Okay. Um, oh, I did have one thing. It's not necessarily for the board, but I'm probably going to want to get in contact with you, Ross, to talk about uh, stuff that relates to formation committee okay. and uh, our options for a general manager. And if it's possible, I'd love to be able to video conference you into that meeting, which is going to be on this Monday. It's coming Monday? This coming Monday. In the morning, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. 10 o'clock? Yeah. 10 o'clock. That's right. Awesome. All should right. I, before you adjourn, should I ask a question to you, Ethan, about the SAFE? I think you said it was a subcommittee meeting on Monday. Or should I wait till after the meeting? I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for asking. would like to let the board know I, will, I would not be able to attend even remotely. I have a special meeting a, of another client uh, where one of the directors died in the office. So we're actually In the actual physical office? Not the physical oh office. Oh my god. Oh. But the <laughs> office is now vacant because of, of this director's passing. Oh. So we have to appoint a new one within 60 days and this is, so I, I will be busy doing that uh, at that time. If you would like someone else to be present though, I, will, I can talk to somebody and see if I can have somebody uh, to be available at that time just to answer general legal questions. Uh, well, just just let me know. Thank you. And uh -huh. what what we'll try to do with the budget negotiations ad hoc, I'm sure we'll have some questions, and we can get those to you by the end of the week, okay. just for thank some uh, consideration. But thanks for letting us know. Sure, absolutely. All right. Um, oh, and I, I did have one question about the the budget oh, ad hoc committee <laughs> in regards to what our availability is for that, um, because I was planning on taking a little bit of time to go home and see my family for a couple of days, but starting when? Uh, I was planning on driving home tonight actually, but and coming back when? Uh, on Friday. <laughs> 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 uh, you're, you're now an orphan at this <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, you said coming back on Friday? What time on Friday? What? Time to be on Friday late. You're gonna come back late. I probably come back late. We were your family. You poor kid. Go see your Spencer. Go see your family. They love you. But go see them. They love him. They deserve him. They birth him. He's their first. This might be managing. Well, you and I can certainly be in contact before then. I mean, it's. I'm certainly available to to do some work during that time if it's by video conference or whatever. Since you and I are in charge of this, you're in charge of making deposits to the Treasury. I'm supposed to initiate accounting transactions. You're going to approve them. I was wondering your availability to get down to the county office. We'll, we'll connect up. And, and off again. We can do that. Yeah, oh, but we'll, I was thinking we'll in terms of we can meet on budget ad hoc at the same, at the same time. At the same time, yeah. Cool. Can I do it? Uh, yeah. In, in um, fact, we <laughs> might go pilfer a document out of the auditor's office with him. A budget. Is there anything else you need to cover on this? I don't want you to get nope. too far afield from what's on this agenda. Right, right. Uh, we're fine. Yeah. Okay. Just we'll we'll be in touch about when yeah. to have that. Thank you. Um, okay. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thanks. Okay. Uh, all the, any public comment? Any board comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. We are adjourned at eight forty-one.